Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, happy time zone, everybody. This is the Road to Dusk. You can call me Road Dusk, anything that you would call a friend. I am a dream musher, so I focus on sleep, dreams, and the imagination. To help create an environment where people can learn to be the better versions of themselves, and we got a pretty fun, um, at least educational, stream for tonight. For those that do not know, and probably have not read the title, it is DID Awareness Day as of March 5th. This is kind of a thing that I'm hoping to want to try and do every year, where every March 5th, I try and create some educational content with regards to DID or other dissociative disorders, because let me be clear, dissociation is a spectrum, and DID, while it is important to talk about, coming from someone with a different dissociative diagnosis as other specified dissociative disorder, dissociation is a spectrum, and DID is not the only thing that we need to talk about. It is important to talk about DID and dissociative issues, absolutely. But to monolith DID is something that I do not want to condone here, and I want to try and help people unlearn, if that makes sense. That said, when it comes to the ID Awareness Day and this Q&A, I am actually planning to make this as a proper video on the second YouTube channel, which for those that don't know, you should be able to type in explanation point card with two R's to be able to have access and be able to see our website, which has all of our socials, including the YouTube channel that has everything set as straight VODs and the other YouTube channel we're currently is prioritizing Conlane showcasing, but we are planning to create more dissociative content in the future, such as um, a Kingdom Hearts theory series in regards to the parallels to characters' experiences in the current saga prior to Kingdom Hearts 4 and dissociation and dissociative disorders therein. If that's something that you guys are curious about, feel free to, to subscribe over there and feel free to stick around here. That said, I do want to preface, this is coming from the experience of one member of an OSDD system, I cannot talk. This is coming from the experience of one person in an OSDD system. While I am the one that talks in front most often when it comes to my system, there can and often will be slightly different opinions or even massively differing opinions. It, from one person in a system to another. That's not just a situation with my system, that could be a situation with any and all systems. That said, let me uh, start things off with some questions that we already had, which if you wanted a head start on some questions that you wanted to ask, you were more than free to be able to become part of the Discord server where we had a dedicated thread for asking questions for this time. That said, we actually already have quite a few good questions to start off with. So let's start things off by clarifying some terminology in regards to dissociative disorders and system HUD. As a forewarning, I will be trying to use system HUD and more clinical neutral terminologies as there is a prominent section of the community that is non-clinical. Whether you feel that this is helpful or not, there are aspects of dissociation that do not come from any clinical analysis. Prime example, trauma. Sometimes dissociation to the point of systemhood just happens. Sometimes trauma can be brought up that leads to it, and it can be so embedded that it can be difficult to try and figure out what that trauma was. Sometimes it can be too much effort to try and figure out what that pro what that trauma is, and sometimes systemhood comes from no trauma at all, just the brain doing its thing. In a way, coming from someone that is neurodivergent, with our body and brain being autistic and ADHD, a lot of people, rightfully so, see dissociation as another aspect of neurodivergence, especially to the point of dissociative disorders, such as not only OSDD and DID, but also derealization, depersonalization. I do want to point that a lot of 
a lot of, of non-system hood or non-system inducing dissociative disorders tend to be left out in the conversation on dissociation. So I guess with that, let's start with a baseline on what dissociation is. First off, let me let me change the music real quick. You're gonna see me floating a little bit. Give me a hot sec. There we go. Now, so what is dissociation? Dissociation literally means to be not connected to society or not connected to the world. That is more closer to the literal, etymological, literal building blocks in the words that incorporate, that create the word from Latin because the word disassociate in other words therein, like dissociation, disassociation, things like that, come from Latin. Now, the etymological or the descriptive, how things are written, the descriptive meaning of the word is not always the same as the prescriptive or how words are actually used in context. And we'll get into the difference between descriptive and prescriptive a little bit later on through the course of this Q&A. But descriptive of dissociation means to be disconnected or to be yeah, to be separated or disconnected from aspects of society, culture, and the world. Clinically, in the, con in the prescriptive use of clinical uh, analysis, dissociation is a response in that can come from many stimuli, either overstimulation, understimulation, trauma response, things of that nature. Dissociation is a an effect from a cause. Dissociation can come in many forms, from the zoning out of folks with ADHD, to where like the stereotypical like zoning off into space, to the uh, to something as severe as complete amnesia blocks and complete identity break, or break can be a bit of an ableist term, and we'll get into that later. But the severe the quote-unquote severe end of dissociation can go to complete memory kinesthetic body emotional sep uh, separation and or forming into a whole new identity which spiritually we could talk about potentially leading to its own soul but again that is a whole bunch of that is a whole can of worms that we'll get into later but the core of dissociation is a disconnection from something either partially or completely. Now, obviously, this does mean, by default, dissociation is a spectrum. So, while we are talking about systemhood, and while we are talking about multiplicity, at the same time, we do need to acknowledge the aspects of dissociation that do not lead to systemhood. Derealization, depersonalization is one aspect and one form of dissociation that is quote unquote severe, but is not to the point of systemhood. Why? Because derealization and depersonalization are more aspects that, when combined with other aspects, can lead to more more severe or more more heightened potencies of dissociation. Derealization is when you feel disconnected from reality specifically. Depersonalization is when you're disconnected from your sense of self. Now, other aspects than other words and terminologies related to dissociation, specifically regarding systemhood, are these. You have a few outdated terminologies that I feel are important to touch on for the sake of education here. You have original, which is a identity that is assumed or claimed to be the very first identity in a system's body. 
some people may still use the term original, such as ourselves, when just being descriptive in regards to our own experiences, but not everyone feels comfortable using this term, so use it sparingly. We also uh, want to talk about aspects, the aspects of dissociation, specifically terminologies that definitely can be changed, but are still used practically constantly in the clinical world. That said, splitting. Splitting, as we may know from the oh-so-great oh Invincible series with the movie called Split, is the action of another identity coming into form more commonly seen as being broken off of a main identity and being a sub-identity on its own. The main reason on why a term like this is seen as not really wanting to be used anymore by the dissociative community and other communities they're in is because of the ableism and the assumption that one identity cannot be its own self. That one identity, quote unquote, branching off from another, cannot learn and cannot grow to have its own likes, dislikes, and pursuits. Prime example, as we talked about last year, 2023, and if you want to check this out, you can, you're, if you want to check it out, you're more than open to check out the VOD, is an analysis on Roxas from Kingdom Hearts 2. How, in a way, from Sora turning into a Heartless, Roxas's identity had quote-unquote branched off from Sora's, creating his own. However, with the lens of splitting and with the lens with a lot of traditional clinical psychologists and traditional values in psychology, Roxas, and by extension other identities that are formed through dissociation, are not as full, not as complete, and therefore not as valid as Sora, as the original. This kind of commentary is something that many people in the dissociative community, ourselves included, do not want to promote. Because that is a major amount of ableism that, just quite frankly, is not needed. The autistic community struggles with a lot of ableism as is, with how we are often infantilized by the clinical community and by clinical, psych by clinical like, medical specialists. And that is a, a parallel that we see among dissociative folks. And that recognizing the signs of intersectionality and how our that and how we are impacted by systems of oppression and weaponized language is really important to actually really be informed and know how to talk about and promote things in regards to what we are going for. That does include dissociation and dissociative advocacy. More terminology in regards to dissociation that might be, or truly should be, considered outdated is arguably, some of our system would say, integration. Integration, more descript uh, descriptively, again, going back to the literal here, means the intertwining, or inter between, gration kind of melding a melding between two or more aspects creating one thing while integrations do have can and do happen in regards to dissociation at the same time it doesn't happen for everyone and it doesn't happen the same way every time if anything we need to have multiple multiple terms in regards to the different forms of integration that can happen some integrations are temporary, some are permanent, some are done with consent, some are done without consent. A way that you can think of various forms of integration in dissociation is acting through Steven Universe. We see multiple forms of integration into different identities between gems, some consensual leading to beautiful, beautiful depictions of character such as Pearl and Amethyst leading to Sardonyx. And others we see more permanent through consent and communication, such as Ruby and Sapphire, leading to Garnet. Others we see as non-consensual, 
being seen as hostile in some way, either to themselves or to those around them, or in a way can be seen as an attempt to hold something back. For example, Lapis with Jasper. Trying to think of some more terms. Um, let's see. There are a lot more terms in regards to dissociation that you may have heard outside of clinical aspects that may still need to be called out. Prime example, shard. Mainly coming from our own experience because we were pulled into a mentality in regards to something called shard theory, which we do not condone nor do we uh, hope that anyone looks it up. We were actually struggling to look it up after we left a very shitty living situation that had us not really raised under because we were adults, but just had the aspects of shard theory and whatnot ramped into our head during a time when we were very vulnerable and just getting out of a very abusive situation. Shard theory, and by extension, shards, are a mystical concept of very ableist ideals that we mentioned earlier with kind of, with a core shard, or like a core form or whatever, with shards breaking off to create different aspects. While this on the surface seems very much akin to some of the terminologies that I said earlier that arguably should be a bad thing because it still enables some aspects of ableism, again implying that anything that branches off cannot be truly cannot be truly complete all it is is just an aspect or a broken off piece of its source that is something that a lot of dissociative folks try to call out against but often may be overlooked so, yeah, that's kind of uh, an important one to kind of break off of. And one that I think that I really need to pull the band-aid off of is Topa and Topomancy. Again, going into the aspects of descriptive and prescriptive terminology, descriptive, Topa, literally, from Tibetan, means manifestation. And in the aspects of Western topomancy, that makes sense. The literal term topa means manifestation, and Western topas are often manifested in regards to desperate times, often that as shown in a lot of clinical studies, loneliness and aspects of the of the of depression. However, prescriptively, in Tibetan culture and Tibetan Buddhism, a tulpa is nothing to do with manifestation. A tulpa, if anything, is actually a form of astral projection and an astral form therein. Tulpa comes from deity yoga, which is specifically a, a particular practice within Tibetan Buddhism. The main reason on why we have terms related to tulpa in the English language today is because of Alexandria David Neal a woman from Belgium who had gone into Tibet during a time when Tibet was isolationist. She had written several books in regards to her time in Tibet, which even now spark controversy, not only within clinical studies and mystical studies, but especially among Buddhist circles. Some speculate that she was more trying to talk about a concept called Yidam, which coming from someone that is not Buddhist but had done research in regards to the topic, a yidam is a physical form of a being that can often be a projection in regards to aspects of an individual, especially in regards to what Buddhist ideals may consider an aspect of suffering. A tulpa is meant to be an astral projection specifically astral, again, going into meditation. A yidam is a more intimate projection and a more intimate aspect of oneself that one can see. That said, 
even though it can be argued that Alexandria David Neal may have gotten the term wrong, at the same time, the current Dalai Lama, like during the 70s, had actually that had actually not really venerated, but still held her in high regard, calling David Neal a much necessary femme voice in the voices of Buddhism. So whether you want to see Alexandria David Neal as a Western woman who invaded the who invaded a the, an Eastern place and appropriated and misused certain aspects of Buddhist terminology to describe her experience, or see her as a voice for Buddhism, especially when we take into account the current situation of Tibet and its current rule by China. Even though it is an autonomous region, China's attempts to try and basically destroy Tibetan culture, the oppression against Tibetans, and the use of Tulpa and misappro- I'm trying to figure out wording. Whether you want to see either Alexandria David Neal as someone who was unneeded in the situation and inserted herself via her Western privilege to go into Tibet and talk about these issues while simultaneously potentially mis misrepresenting them, or you see her in the Dalai Lama's lens as a beacon and a much needed voice for the advocacy and representation of Buddhism globally, especially in regards to how Tibet and Buddhism is being perceived now, especially when you look at how China has continuously been trying to make Tibet basically convert to Sinetic ideals and Chinese CCP ideals, we have a very prominent context and subtext in regards to not only cultural appropriation, but also basically cultural silence. A lot of Buddhists have actually tried to talk to people in the Tulpa Mansi movement to not use the term Tulpa, and a lot of people do not listen to them. Some have even received death threats for requesting that their culture and their language be respected. Some people even going so at, uh, as far as to go, Buddhism and Tibetan Buddhism specifically is almost dead, so why should we care? So, that's kind of something that I don't really want to promote. Alternate terms in regards to topomancy are servitor, which has been around in Western mysticism since at least the 1920s, right around the time that, Tibet, that, that uh, Alexandria David Neal had gone to Tibet and started writing her books that led to the globalization of Buddhism and arguably the Western gaze on the on Buddhism therein, but there's another form that is arguably more neutral, not only on the appropriate standpoint, but also on the mystical thought form. Figure out what, whatever term you feel more comfortable using, especially if you are part of one of these groups. Arguably, it's up to you. And even then, I know there's still going to be some debate, uh, potentially, of people trying to continue to claim that using the term tulpa is okay. We personally don't want to use it. We don't want to hear it, especially because we, our experiences in regards to tulpas from our own personal experience originated from, originated from very hurtful, abusive, and harmful covert erotic hypnosis uh, situations, which obviously we can go into aspects of how thought forms can be effectively like used in regards to a fetish and how dissociation therein can and has been fetishized, but that I feel is going to be too intimate and too adult of a topic for this time. If it's something that people want me uh, to discuss more, you may have to either wait for like an archived video or archives they first certain subscribers, or 
you're probably just going to have to ask uh, me in the Discord server, because I'm a lot more open with talking about certain like certain topics, obviously, with their trigger warnings and content warnings provided. All of that said, there are quite a few more terms in regards to dissociation and systemhood that can be very important. Uh, one being alter. Some people don't really like the term alter anymore because of its descriptive etymology coming from the term alternate, that like alternate personality, because unfortunately DIT used to be called multiple personality disorder. So alter coming from the term alternate, the alternate personality, or as perceived today by some folks as alternate ident identity. Alter is arguably seen by some folks as an appropriated, outdated, and even offensive term. So some people tend to prefer to use headmate headmate being like a portmanteau of head and roommate. That said, let me double check to see how like my stability is right now. Okay. Okay, just wanted to make sure that things were looking good. That said, let's actually go over some of the other questions that we have gotten in regards to DID. So, uh, let's see. So, I have a timeline of DID uh, history, including key milestones and cultural figures. Oh boy, this is going to be a bit sad. A lot of people, when you, when people think of DID, more often than not, we deal with situations where people have made headlines for faking dissociation prime example in the modern world is Trisha Paytas. But she is not the first and she has not been the last. Prime example, one of the most prominent names in dissociative circles that still arguably garners debate even though the vast majority of people see her as faking is Sybil. In the 1970s and si well, in the 1960s and 70s, Sybil had worked with her therapist to create a biography in regards to her supposed hundred or more identities, which having more than a hundred identities in one system is known as being polyfragmented or polyfragmentism. That said, after some time, Sybil had claimed that she had faked all of this information. We want to propose a question to everyone that may be listening or watching this. We have personally had experiences of folks that are dissociated, that are systems, suddenly having someone in their system go, oh, well, we're faking, bye, and just leave, trying to wipe themselves off of the face of the earth. Could that not have happened to Sybil? Could that not have happened to where, given the spotlight and given the monolithing that was put on Sybil, could not someone in her system, if she was truly a system, had had enough and felt the best course of action was to rip a gigantic band-aid off the situation, say that they were faking, and get everyone's eyes off of them? Because think of it from the standpoint of a system. Suddenly being the one and only voice in regards to a disability would be like having to have Hannah Gatsby be the forefront that be the forefront of the autistic movement without her consent. And it's especially that consent part that has me that has me and other members of my system want to think a little more and not be so sure that Sybil had actually faked her DID. Because when you think about the aspects of being put on a pedestal without your consent, being seen as the voice for something, it can get overwhelming very quickly, almost, almost to the point to where it can just feel like too much. Too many people have eyes on you. Too many people are asking you what feels like the same questions over and over again. I'm sure a lot of trans folks may be able to feel this as well, being the token trans folk in like their friend group or in their area, where they're often asked very intrusive questions. 
And in the beginning, while they may feel comfortable talking about it, because sure, being educational and being informative is important, but after a while, that gets draining. And it feels like you've become nothing but an encyclopedia for folks when knowledge is just as easily open and available for people to find. Not as much in Sybil's day, but definitely today. So... So that said, I feel like that kind of questioning about the situation with Sybil is pretty important when talking about dissociative issues because while, yes, it was a sad situation and while, yes, regardless of whether Sybil had faked being dissociative or not, it had a massive impact on how DID and dissociative disorders are perceived to the modern day, it's still an important question because we have to look at systems individually and collectively and see them as people not as statistics not as information and even then Sybil is not the only one to be monolith in this way let alone be perceived in such a harsh lens from the modern era there's even Eve who actually predates Sybil in regards to her supposed faking DID Eve was from the 1950s, right after World War II. And we have to talk about certain aspects of psychology, because psychology was a very new and budding science and medicine at this time. During this time, PTSD was still seen as shell shock disorder, a, uh, a disability that only impacted veterans. So... How we saw and interacted with mental health was very much in its infancy. And by extension, the etiquette and the morality and the aspects of privacy and, and arguably professional intimacy therein regarding psychology and psychologists and their clients was also in its infancy. So it caused a lot of schisms and had a lot of arguably parasocialism therein. We have a lot of people debating uh, and arguably showing evidence that many aspects of early psychology in post-war era was a lot about comfort, especially in regards to a lot of women and AFAB folks being in therapy while their men and AFAB folks were out at a job, getting food, getting groceries, and doing all of the heavy work, while the while the women in AFAB folks were still doing a lot of work, but at home. There was a massive disconnect, not only in regards to what spouses did, but also their own their lives and experiences. Many men returning home completely changed from the war. And so it made it very difficult for a lot of women in AFAB folks to be able to interact with their husbands and if they needed a masculine intimacy, what better way to go that way than to go to a male psychologist. So there was a lot of foul play going on in regards to not only how some people may have perceived therapy and perceived psychology, but also arguably how some people in the field themselves treated it. It's also why we have a lot of the misconceptions and the horrible representation and stereotyping in regards to hypnotherapy in psychology. Hypnotherapy, or you could argue EMDR, is a subset or a branching off of hypnotherapy, has a lot of misconceptions and arguably a fetishization in and of itself due to a lot of medical malpractice happening in the early days of psychology, again, especially during the post, like, post-war like post era. So, it makes trying to talk about a lot of medical issues uh, and the history of dissociation in a medical lens incredibly difficult. Because there are some things that are lost and some things that are so heavily impacted by misconceptions that it makes it difficult to try and talk about things that are relevant. 
That said, there are certain things in regards to those stereotypes and fetishizations that are still important to talk about. So, it's just a whole can of worms. Just a big old can of worms. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. That said, there are some aspects of clinical the uh, of clinical psychology and the perception of dissociation therein that many people especially among the dissociative community do not stand behind in the beginning final fusion or an integration of all just to the point of there is only one identity remaining was seen as the norm however today Thankfully, in a lot more places, a lot of the- Oh! Oh, shoot! Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Thank you so much for the raid! Hold on. Give me a moment. I'm going to be floating for a bit while I check out who raided. Is a tree! Tree, thank you so much for the raid! <laughs> Be so, going back on what I was saying, Final Fusion is not seen as very helpful anymore, and thankfully- many modern and sensible psychologists have allowed systems who are their clients to have the autonomy to make a decision on whether they want to go for final fusion or a relatively new-ish term i don't i wasn't able to find when it was first coined but healthy multiplicity effectively being when you have still multiple identities in one body but everyone is able to safely and amicably be able to collaborate Everyone having their aspects of their own lives and their own abilities being able to take the being taken into account so that everyone can be themselves while simultaneously working together as one. Uh, that said, let's finally work on the other question uh, that a friendo had given. What are some guidelines for etiquette when it comes to a person opening up to uh, to someone? Uh, in regards to having DID in general, when not all members of the system agree on being out, and or is it okay for me to be excited about meeting others in a system? Obviously, it's going to all depend because there are some areas of the world that are more behind in regards to dissociative etiquette than others. Supposedly, from what I've been hearing from a lot of my Aussie friends, there are still plenty of psychologists that still refer to DID as MPD. And by that context, arguably, I would not be surprised if many people in Australia still perceive the main course of action for dissociative folks being Final Fusion. So uh, depending on where a person comes from, you have to understand that there are some people that may come from situations of more ableism than others. While someone may have unlearned some of the ableism that they were raised under and like made to perceive, at the same time, it is important to give the person space when they need to unlearn that. Also, whoever followed, thank you so much for the follow. Why in the heck is... Behold, it is... Why is my chat not updating? There we go. <laughs> okay. Well, Cryptid Forest, thank you for hopping in. For those that don't know what we're doing uh, over here, this is the Road to Dusk. You can call me Road. Dusk, anything you would call a friend. I am a dream usher, so I focus on sleep, dreams, and the imagination to help create an environment where people learn to be better versions of themselves. Today is March 5th, meaning it is the International DID Awareness Day coming from someone with a dissociative disorder, specifically OSDD in the DSM-5TR, but in the ICD was actually melded with DID, and also coming from someone whose late grandmother was dissociative, a whole bunch of just dissociative history in my own blood. I'm wanting to talk about it, give information in regards to it if people don't know about it already, and also just give a space for folks that are dissociative, whether they are early in figuring it out or not, to ask questions in regards to advocacy, literacy, like all the jazz, all that jazz. If you do want to become part of the uh, community uh, that I host, 
with collaboration with another system who is also our partner system, the Nuke Threat Clan, aka Nebula Snooktees. Feel free to, be to become part of the Discord. If I have any mods available, feel free to um, do an exclamation point Discord. The psychiatrist I saw recently didn't even consider DID to be a separate condition from others. It told me, yes, you display these sy symptoms, but DID is no longer a separate diagnosis, so the current one remains the same. That is horrible. That is annoying. That's like people up until recently going, oh, well, you as an autistic show symptoms of ADHD, but if you have one, you can't have the other. I hope your psychologist, I hope your psychiatrist comes in time to understand that people can have multiple, uh, like multiple diagnoses at the same time. Diagnoses and brains and how brains function are not limited to how people outside of those brains assume them to be. So yeah. <laughs> but in regards to... Okay, going back to some of the questions. Um, what are some good guidelines when not all members of the system agree on being out to the, to the person that's wanting to know about them? Again, give them space. There are some folks that that there are some folks that may not want to be open either due to their own personal experiences, potentially of like say being treated as like the circus clown of a situation, or potentially being the victim of a situation where they or someone else in the system was preferred over another. Situations like this in regards to dissociative experiences are more common than you think. And a lot of it can boil down to a fear of their individuality not being respected. While you may be open to respecting their individuality on top of them being part of a collective, at the same time, you have to respect other people's trauma while helping them realize if they may go too far that they may be using their trauma in a way that is more harmful than others prime example when someone wants to claim and generalize their traumatic experiences as as being the experiences of everybody else's and thus everyone has to think the same way as them frankly that is a situation that happens not just in dissociative spaces but in a lot of disability related uh, spaces it wasn't that i can't have both it's that he said did is not an exclusive condition that also doesn't make sense to me, considering the fact that with, at least with what I know and what I have found in regards to modern studies, DID can be its own, like, can be its own thing. It has its own context in regards to, like, why multiple identities form, for, like, in the vast majority of cases claiming to be trauma, but even then... Like, that still has its own situation. While someone can have PTSD and have DID, at the same time, we understand, we, we understand clinically, descriptively, and prescriptively the differences between PTSD, how that comes into being, and DID and dissociative disorders, and how those come into being. So, it sounds like your psychiatrist is just being a pretentious piece of shit. <laughs> Also, forewarning, we are 18 plus here, and I will be cursing. <laughs> uh, is it okay for me to be excited about meeting others in a system? Absolutely. It can always be fun to, like, to meet someone new, to see how their interactions, how their likes, dislikes, and perceptions of you differ from someone else in the body. It can be situ it can be intimidating in some situations as well. Just like how in some situations, some people may call you intimidating, some people may call you not intimidating, things like that. That can happen. It just gets more complicated when you get multiple people in one in one body. Trying to figure out if we want to be out publicly or not, the old group that hosted were very open with it. But the new fronting group that I'm part of are much more private and prefer to not be known. That's completely understandable. One thing that a lot of folks... Um, trying to figure out how to word things when it comes to dissociation to the point of systemhood 
just like any disability, especially any invisible disability, we have the right to be able to choose whether we want to be open about it or not, because the more that we're open about it, the more that we risk facing certain discriminations and certain harms, namely a lot of ableism. So it's a better question of weighing the pros and cons on how much we want to be open about that and how much we feel that's going to help or hinder us. Yeah, he was saying that DID as a standalone diagnosis is not a thing based on what he said was recent information, but rather it's a set of symptoms that come under dissociative related conditions. I would have loved for your psychologist to have provided some info, because like the DSM 5 TR has DID as its own thing, and the ICD 12, which what Europe uses, has DID still as its own thing. Neither of those that neither of those booklets claim that DID has to be co like co-occurring with any particular diagnosis to have a diagnosis. It's more like saying ADHD is no longer a standalone diagnosis and it's now just a set of conditions that can often accompany autism. See, and like I said, that is some bullshit. Because ADHD and autism, as we understand it, are two aspects of neurodivergence that do not always go one-to-one. -one. While, yes, it can be possible that someone with ADHD can also have autism, there are plenty of examples of people like that are autistic not having ADHD, and there's plenty of situations where people with ADHD do not have autism. So basically, I did but didn't get an official diagnosis. Get a second opinion. I highly recommend that you get a second opinion because that psychiatrist, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no me gusta. <laughs> Let's see, are there any good groups or advocacy organizations for those who need community or for family and friends and others who are trying to learn more and be supportive of the people in their life who experience DID? That. Oh boy, you see psychiatrists are effectively leaving this province, so that might be a bit difficult. Oof. The fingers fingers crossed for you, Dre. Um now this question. Oh boy. From my and my systems research, most of the communities and organizations that you find will be more on the clinical side in regards to dissociation. The one that is more popular right now that is not clinical is the plural dissociation, but I personally discourage uh, trying to use the plural association for any info. I am pers like my system and I are personally against the plural association. And with also saying this, I do want to put a disclaimer. Anyone that we mention regarding like any organization, any people that we name, any collectives that we name, this is not to insinuate harassment. This is not to insinuate hate. This is to be informative, to help you uh, make a choice. The choice is yours. But if you make a decision, especially in regards to not wanting to listen to any content that we talk about from these individuals, we highly recommend that you just block, that you just block and move on. Do not insinuate, do not instigate, do not harass, nothing like that. That said, the Parole Association is an organization, nonprofit, that is centered and I believe founded from my knowledge um, from that I believe one of their heads is from the Netherlands. And how they tend to perceive uh, multiplicity, collect, uh, and systemhood is a bit concerning considering a lot of what they tend to talk about uses a lot of terminology that tends to minimize a lot of clinical and diagnosed experiences which is especially so for some people that that the Pearl Association has collaborated with such as the Alexandrite system. In 2021 the Alexandrite system on Twitter had talked about supposedly there being situations where dissociative folks as organ donors their donor cards not being respected just because they are dissociative claiming that this is similar to experiences of folks that are schizophrenic not having their donor cards or other aspects in regards to their their body being donated and their 
choice to how their body and their autonomy will be respected in death being disrespected. By proxy, the Alexandrite system tried to talk about how because of their own medical trauma and their own personal experiences, other people should not get diagnoses in regards to being dissociative. The Alexandrite system talked about how being the basically having a situation where claiming that should you get a diagnosis, you'll be oppressed and you'll be medically oppressed and in your body and autonomy will not be respected. Basically, pulling the whole card of don't tell your psychologist or psychiatrist or therapist that you're gay or else you're not going to be able to donate blood. This to us, which we tried to call out on an old Twitter account, um, came off as speci especially harmful and ableist because, again, that it is like telling a gay person, don't tell your therapist you're gay or else you can't donate blood. It is victim blaming those that are being affected by a, by a hurtful system that is instigated by stereotypes and harmful and harmful depictions. If we want to promote like advocacy and representation and a need for better terminology and representation, especially in medical fields and research, we need to push for that, not prom not that not seriously promote a stealth culture that more often than not shames those that are impacted and even claims those that are that, that are diagnosed as traitors of the idea. Ice pitchfork behind back. What? I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> but because of the Alexandrite system being in collaboration with the Portal Association, among other aspects of the Portal Association promoting the term tulpas and tulpamancy, which we talked about our concerns in regards to the term like tulpa and tulpamancy a while ago before y'all are rated out. We would, we would highly recommend not to associate with the Polo Association or look at any other information because we feel that it could risk you guys finding misinformation or disinformation that would be more harm than good. For a TLDR on our concerns in regards to the terms Tolpa and Tolpamancy, Alexandria David Neal was a Belgian opera singer who went into Tibet in the early 1900s during a time when Tibet was isolationist. She had wrote several books on her experiences in regards to Tibetan magic and Tibetan Buddhism that were the that thus arguably forced the Western gaze onto the onto Buddhism and by extension Eastern philosophies and these magics. Come the 1970s, terms like terms related to tulpas uh, started to be embedded into Western psychology coming up with the idea that tulpas were manifestations of instincts, desires, things like that, going off of the descriptive, the literal etymology of the word tulpa, and not the prescriptive use being astral projection in regards to a particular practice of deity yoga. Now you have folks that are claiming identities and, uh, and thought forms being tulpas and practicing something called Western Tulpamancy or often called Tulpamancy for short. We are against the terms Tulpa and Tulpamancy because especially with how Tibet is being treated now by China and the CCP, in regards to the CCP trying to force an assimilation by the Tibetans into Chinese ideals, when we promote the use of Tulpa and Tulpamancy, how we use the, how a lot of people use them in the West, we promote the misuse and appropriation of terms that are embedded in a culture that is currently being oppressed. So if we actually wanted to be informed about the situation and promote advocacy, especially in respect to BIPOC voices, specifically Tibetan and Buddhist voices that have been calling out the use of tulpa in dissociative circles and in dissociative spaces, we need to call out how these terms are used, respect those, the respect the voices of those that are calling it out, and find alternate terms that are in, that are still inclusive to those that are doing the practice, without using the, without using these appropriate terms. 
I'm vaguely familiar with the word tulpa, but don't remember what it means or what tulpamancy implies. Tulpa literally in Tibetan means manifestation, and I know I'm getting the tones wrong. But prescriptively, how it's used culturally. In Tibetan Buddhism, more specifically deity yoga, a tulpa is an astral projection in regards to a particular form of meditation. So, yeah, <laughs> there is that. Um, another question that we had was, what are some good ways to be an ally for folks with DID? One, I would say, is to don't just focus on DID. Like I said at the beginning of the stream, dissociation is a spectrum. So there's more than just dissociation to the point of systemhood. You can have dissociation not to the point of systemhood, like derealization and depersonalization. You can have basic forms of dissociative amnesia without, w without multiplicity. So understanding the variation therein is also important. Uh, with a diff Here's a good question from someone in our community. What is the difference between DID and OSTD? Currently, going off of information in regards to the DSM-5TR, which again is not quite the same as the ICD-12, but we'll get into the differences in a bit. But going off of the DSM-5TR, because we live in the States, DID is considered a dissociative disorder that leads to complete amnesia breaks and multiple identities. OSDD allows more complexity where you can have, say, OSDD 1A, which is complete amnesia breaks, but not complete identities, or complete, more akin to fragments, as we'll get into the terminology for fragment in a bit. You can have OSDD 1B, which is incomplete amnesic breaks or partial amnesic breaks with complete or more fully fledged uh, alternate identities. You can have OSDD... Uh, there's like four other types, one of them that can be forged from like, say, brainwashing and cult groups. Um, I would recommend trying to read more on OSTD as well. Caveat being that in the ICD-12, what used to be OSDD in uh, the ICD-11, which OSDD being short for Other Specified Dissociative Disorder, had recently been merged into Dissociative Identity Disorder. So at least in Europe, OSDD is considered a basically a form of DID basically implying that you don't need to have that, that you don't need to have complete amnesia breaks to be considered DID. You can still be DID even if your your breaks are not considered complete. The water is rather, rather distracting strongly agree. Oh shoot. All right, let me move. All right, I'm a little farther away from the water. <laughs> you know what? Let me actually turn around so y'all can see. Well, actually, y'all can see stuff behind me right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, that said, where was I going? Differences between DID and OSDD. At least when it comes to the uh, DSM, one of the biggest things with the differences is that DID requires complete amnesia breaks. This... Oh, shit, the ads. Ah! <laughs> okay, I'll wait a bit. But a massive thank you to everyone that has hopped over so far. Ah! This has me happy, this has me excited. I'm really glad uh, for anyone that has subscribed and is hearing me during the ads. A massive thank you to everyone that has hopped over. Uh, yeah, I do, uh, like, as you've probably been seeing, I do have some questions that were already pre-sent. But after these questions, if you have any more questions, either regarding dissociative uh, and, like, collective knowledge, or even personal questions regarding, like, me different members of my system you're more than open to ask away so like this will be going for a while so like come on bring it on that said looks like the ads are done 
So the big difference between DID and OSTD in regards to the DSM is that DID has complete amnesic breaks, whereas OSTD does not, at least not often. Or, depending on the type of OSDD, it may happen, but different circumstances lead to it being considered completely different from DID. While DID has complete amnesia breaks, this includes working memory, like uh, traumatic memory. This can include. Oh, shoot! Captain Kira! Holy moly! Thank you so much for the raid! Can we get a shout out, please? Roomba Rays, let's go! Yeah, one of my mods, can we please get a shout out for uh, for Captain Kira, please? For those that don't know what we're doing around here, this is the Road to Dusk. You can call me Road Dusk, anything that you would call a friend. I'm a dream musher, so I focus on sleep, dreams, and the imagination to help create an environment where people can learn to be the better versions of themselves. We are doing a Q&A regarding the DID Awareness Day because we have OSDD. We want to make this to be an annual thing. And yeah, we are actually, our community is actually headed by not just us, but our partner system. If you want to uh, become part of the community in any way, you can check out the Discord. Do you know that when you hop in, you will have 15 minutes to verify that you've read the rules. Otherwise, you will be temporarily booted by one of the bots meant to curb against hate raids and trolls. That said, we do have a few more questions that were pre-sent by the community before we get to like open Q&A stuff, which does include not only like if you have like questions regarding like like dissociative history, clinical and not clinical, um, if you have questions regarding our system in particular, anything like that, feel free to ask away. That said, we have been on the question on the difference between DID and OSTD. The main thing, which I need to simplify, is um, that is different forms of amnesia. DID is more often known to have complete amnesic breaks, which includes ki like kinetic, so body movement, as the temporal or aspects of time, spatial, so like praxic, um, working memory, traumatic memory, um, uh, like episodic memory, various aspects of like mental images. DID has you disconnected from all of those. In contrast, uh, OSDD, while there are some forms of OSDD that can have complete amnesic breaks like that, there are some more often than not that don't. Prime example with us, we are considered OSDD 1B, so we have what is considered like incomplete uh, dissociative breaks. So we tend to have more we don't have so much of temporal breaks so much as we have emotional, occasional, episodic. Um, we occasionally have have like complete amnesic breaks, but that's rare and that tends to come from severe trauma. More often than not, when we have switches, we tend to have more emotional or sometimes we don't even have breaks at all. And that can sometimes get existential for some dissociative folks because they're like, they assume that to be dissociative means to have DID. Yeah. Drake, hope you're doing well. The oh, introverted, hello, hello. Bro was doing backflips and break dances. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of the main difference between DID and OSDD. Uh, let's see, the di uh, do. -do, 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 -do. Um, let's see, we had a question also about um, how system responsibility or how we tend to uh, phrase things mutual accountability can be helpful for, other, for others. So mutual accountability is a term in regards to holding the entire system accountable for one system member's behavior. While it may sound hurtful to do a collective punishment, at the same time, while it is one person in the system that is doing something wrong, it is still part of a collective and it's still one part, but one part of the same body, therefore coming from the same brain. While collective punishment can be hurtful and sometimes it may seem cruel and unusual. At the same time, it can very much be needed, especially to help the collective maturity of the system. 
we um, in our Discord server have actually had the discipline some systems that have not uh, held to mutual accountability due to things such as this. Let's see, I agree. <laughs> also lurking on your stream, so much time has passed. You have fun, Drake. All right, that said, um, shoot. I, I need to float for a little bit while I switch um, the next thing. Okay, oh, that needs to be a lot bigger for me to read. So, one person in the community had asked privately, uh, if, you, if you could give anyone advice, like a person who suspects that they may have a dissociative disorder, what would it be? So did I miss the part about fragments? I actually forgot about talking about fragments, so I'll get into that real quick. So, one of the big things um, is that there are two primary subcategories in regards to alters. You have alters, which is confusing considering it is both the core umbrella term and a secondary umbrella term, and fragments. Why the alter as a as a subcategory term? With, like I mentioned earlier, some people may see the term alter as offensive due to it uh, due to it potentially being outdated. So some people tend to prefer the term headmate. I'll switch to using headmate from now on. Well, at least headmate as like a collective term. Headmate, which I'll probably also use as a subcategory term here just for simplicity, is an identity that is completely different from what is considered an original or anyone else in the system. Uh, any headmate can have their own likes, dislikes, preferences, change of voice, uh, preferences in appearance, different gender identity, different preferences on pronouns, things like that. So, the, and even then, there could be some situations where they may be more similar to another person, but they are still uniquely their own Person. They still have their own likes, dif dislikes, preferences, no matter how similar or different another uh, they are compared to another member of the system. In contrast, fragments are a little more difficult to try to explain, namely because I always get so concerned with trying to talk about fragments because I feel like the only ways that I can talk about fragments at the moment for my system and I's own experience with fragments borders on some not so great terminology the best way that we can describe how our fragments are from our own experience is prioritizing a collective um they tend to prioritize just wanting to get a job done they are a very particular strong powerful headspace that is melded into its own essence and that can be a blessing and a curse depending on the situation um for example one of our used to be a used to be a fragment but now has kind of fledged into uh his own identity as a headmate uh, we have someone in our system by who goes by the name wunderkind wunderkind um used to be as a fragment the I guess embodiment of the of the the gifted child complex especially in regards to our being autistic and ADHD um, unfortunately with how we were raised uh, this had melded into a very like self-harming mentality in regards to a profession perfectionism and things like that and in the beginning it was just like a headspace of like doing things done to make people happy things like that and now Wunderkind is more than just a directive he still has the, that kind of drive for that directive but still has his own likes, dislikes, preferences and needs that tend to supersede that directive. Um, okay, going back to the question that we were going to answer, if you could give anyone advice, uh, like a person who suspects that they may be dissociative, 
what would that be? Definitely, best thing that I would say is try to find uh, circles and communities that are truly unconditionally supportive in regards to trying to like look into yourself and question if you are dissociative or not. There are some places that will take advantage of the vulnerability they're in, and because of that, it can be difficult to try and find certain spaces that will actually give you the space unapologetically to experiment and figure out yourself. Some people may get even over concern and think that experimenting can be a manifestation of certain things and you instigate a dissociation that you didn't have before. All in all, the, one of the biggest things, and it is a double-edged sword, is trying to find people and places where you feel that you belong and feel safe enough to be able to figure out yourself. This is not just something that uh, is needed for like those that suspect to have a dissociative disorder, but also those that may suspect to be autistic, suspect to be LGBT in various ways. Just one of the biggest things, especially for those that want to be inclusive, is to learn how to be respectful and to give support unapologetically. Like unapologeti unapologetically and unconditionally. While still having the room to respect your own boundaries and be able to call people out when people overstep. Because a lot of people misunderstand, ourselves included, not even a few years ago, that to be inclusive, to help other people down a path to understand themselves, means that you have to put yourself last. Do not do that. Have, like, keep I'm trying to figure out wording. Do your best to help others figure out themselves and helping others recognize their, their own boundaries while recognizing and holding to your own. That's kind of the best thing that I would say with that. Um, that said, I didn't see any more questions that I had saved. So now is a good time as any for folks to like write uh, any questions that you have regarding dissociative knowledge, a DID history, things like that, or like our system specifically if you have any questions for us. What you got, Tree? Actually, that reminds me. I need to turn on TTS. Why are you adorable? I mean, it takes one to know one when it comes to being adorable, I guess. <laughs> I got you. Did you see my question I sent you? Sweet. Yeah, I actually, I just read it, Star. The If you could give anyone advice um, when they suspect to be dissociative, what would it be? The, it was kind of a blanket response, not just when it comes to, like, folks that suspect to be dissociative, but... For anyone that suspects to be not only just any form of disabled, but a member of like a marginalized marginalized community such as the LGBTQI2 Spirit Plus communities, is learn how to help others be able to figure out who they are and help them to establish their own boundaries. But simultaneously, be sure to hold true to your needs and your boundaries as well. If helping someone else is making you feel like you have to put yourself last, that is not going to be a healthy relationship and not a healthy way for anyone to learn any kind of knowledge, and it's going to do more harm than good. Hope I'm making sense with that. Yes, um. E. Be, like I said, now is as good time as any for you to ask any like personal questions, any more questions related to 
dissociative history, any questions that you may have that even if I answered it earlier that you feel that you didn't have time for me to hear when I said it before or you came in much later, feel free to ask away. I do not mind repeating. In fact, repeating will probably help me to shorten things in regards to <laughs> what I'm saying because I tend to get very wordy. That said, what would again, the I ending be if the fronter is always at the front but gets bombarded by the impulse or demands of what feels like a fragment? So, not including the context of a potential fragment, getting what what you say to be like bombarded by impulses, demands, or even like say certain emotions, um, I would categorize that as emotional bleeding. Emotional bleeding, for those that may not know, is the aspect of like feeling someone else's emotions, needs, or things like that when they are not near front, but you are. Prime example being uh, Roxas in Kingdom Hearts 2 when Sora, Donald, and Goofy hop on the train to go to Yensen's tower. When they're about to leave, Sora cries Roxas' tears. That is an emotional bleeding from Roxas through Sora. And if you want more details in regards to our analysis on Roxas from a dissociative lens, uh, if I have any mods, if you could put down an explanation point card with two R's, there's going to be a set, uh, one of the uh, YouTube links. It's actually our bot channel where you can find uh, our... Uh, DID analysis from last year where we did a whole analysis with Selene and our partner system, the Nuketair Clan, formerly called um, the System Mists um, in regards to, like, Roxas and DID parallels. Also, hey Angel! Hope you're doing well. B, I will... Like, just give a blanket statement what here. What is the best metaphor for someone oh. who doesn't understand or have any no leg about did slash ost? Best metaphor for people uh, for a lack of knowledge on dissociation. Um, okay. That's a bit of a toughie. I would say it's like reading one volume in an encyclopedia and assuming that you know the entire encyclopedia. Or, assuming assuming that there's no knowledge at all, assuming that you know everything about the encyclopedia series just off of the name. I do want to give a blanket statement. Um, my system and I have this uh, have this philosophy that there is very much a difference between ignorance and bigotry. Ignorance is when you don't know something. But bigotry is when you choose not to give a shit about it and be complacent in your lack of knowledge and be complacent in how you perceive the world. Ignorance often means that if you're coming from a good headspace that you do MMM not want to be I ignorant one. and you want to You call it change. having a system. Is that a term people with did have pretty much always used or a new term? System is kind of an uh, oldish uh, kind of term. Um, it does have its roots when it comes to um, like clinical psychology and clinical representations of association. Some uh, modern, uh, more a term that has gained more uh, traction within the past 20-ish years has been collective. Some people may still use system. Some people may see system as outdated or even oppressive. Some people tend to prefer collective. So it's going to vary from individual to individual. But if you ever want to play it safe, it may be better to lean more towards the term, term collective. You're open to use the term system with us because we call ourselves a terrible system, but not everyone does. Trying to assume that everyone uses the same 
word that uses the same word to describe themselves is like assuming that everyone in the LGBTQIA2 uh, Spirit of Plus community calls themselves queer, or that everyone in the autistic community has reclaimed the R slur. Hope I'm making sense there. Does it or systemhood always have to involve complete derealization of one being to give way to another? Or can the fronter always be aware with others sort of talking or being present in the background? If I'm making any sense. So when meeting a new person who says has did it's safer to go with collective. So let me answer Tree Blood's question first and then I'll get back to you, Angel. Um, does DID or systemhood always have to involve complete derealization of one being to give away to uh, to give way to another? No. I talked about this when it came to the differences between DID and OSCD, where DID uh, assumes a complete amnesic break, OSCD uh, assumes um, sometimes a fully amnesic break, but other times, more often than not, does not need a complete amnesic break. And again. In the lens of the ICD-12, the most recent iteration of the International Classification of Diseases in Europe, OSDD has been melded with DID, implying that basically the perception that to have a complete amnesic break is necessary to have a DID diagnosis is now becoming moot. Dissociation and by extension forms of amnesic breaks are a spectrum and recognizing the spectrums therein is important when wanting to recognize and become part of advocacy regarding dissociative experiences and dissociative awareness. Um, there, there is a thing called co-consciousness or co-fronting as said more like casually when you have multiple people in a system fronting at the same time. Um, so that could be something that you could think about. Uh, when meeting a new person who says has DID, it's safer to go with collective. But, um, I would say yes, some people may get confused and may prefer to go with system. It's gonna vary on individual to individual. Also, if the audio is getting too loud or you need me to like change the music, um, let me know. Also, this world is big. I can move around if y'all want. Let's get some metal music in here yet. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with me and telling me you will be patient with my questions BTW Road. Me. Not to change topic, but I just wanted to say it meant a lot. Me. Brain is Absolutely. Dumb. Is this a KH world? This is not a Kingdom Hearts world, actually. This is... Oh, I'll have to pull up the name. Uh, this world is... Oh, where are you? Where are you? Uh, it is Astral Bound by, uh, Vex uh, by no world. Ah! One Winged Angel Symphonic Metal. <laughs> I don't have any metal music on my Bardley, so no we're gonna be stuck with, like, D&D style kind of music. <laughs> yeah, Tree, right now, let's not do anything Omori. <laughs> no heartbreak. Yes, Omori. <laughs> but yeah, actually, this world has nothing to do with Kingdom Hearts. Bad tree. I guess it kind of has okay, that vibe. Okay, fine, XD. Oh, hey, Mari and Angel. Time to assault the bard. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> no, I'm not going to complete that. I'm not going to complete that. <laughs> Speaking of bard stuff, though, if you guys want me to say anything Is particular for ask, shits, there should will be a point where you just called Bardic Inspiration. Who's in charge for the whole day? 
Or is it sudden or is there some willingness to it? Oh! Um... See... Congrats, oh, 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 oh. I'm clipping that incomplete thought. <laughs> At Selini underscore Hailman, hi hi Selini. Ah, got a lot of people I talking at once. Shoot. Bro, how so you gonna will there be days that when you me? just want, the, where you just change who is in charge for the whole day? Or is it sudden or is there some willingness to it? That all varies. Um, Let me get those squats in. There's too many things. Ah! I is. I is short. I is sadly short. Why must I be short? But I will say, when it comes to um, like who is fronting, there can be situations where stack. the one who is fronting can change. Some systems Pop have learned uh, how to switch willingly. Others have not. We are trying to kind of learn how to switch willingly to let other people be able to do their own thing. Um, the nuke terrors actually have a lot more experience with doing that than we do. Short um, king, he he he. Yes, I am short king. I am like five foot four and a half. <laughs> uh, that said. Uh, do -do -do -do. Also, uh, Bunny, if you have a bardic inspiration and want to figure out what song you want me to sing, go for it. Also, let me get those squats and twists in. How many more? Oh boy. Oh, breeding in the say so auto. We haven't done this in a while. First one of the year, I think. Da -da -da. There we go. While I'm just floating, I need to count how many squats and twists I gotta do. Okay. 10 squats, 10 twists, noms and snackies. Okay. And I do have drink over here. Um, so I'll have that Wait, in a bit. Was I supposed to drop in for an era era? Nah, I'm doing this solo tonight, Celine. Also, let me move. <laughs> Part of Salt Win! <laughs> Thank you, Celine! Yeah, let me get those squats and twists no in. No worries, just making sure I'm not missing other duties. Yee! That said, as a reminder, if you have any questions for, like, me or anyone else in the system, I do have folks kind of, uh, co-conscious kind of metaphorically more literally with our uh, inner world peeking behind the door just like waiting to hear see what's going on if you have any questions for anybody um feel free to ask away um you might hear the voice change potentially we unfortunately don't have multiple avatars to represent everyone because we are poor and that shit's expensive <laughs> But let me get those uh, squats and twists in while you guys figure things out. So, what's it like one. having to share a head with Road to Dusk? Only for anyone who wants Three. to answer. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay. What's it like having to share a head with me? Considering some of us have been in the system before Road has even been part of the system. Eh, it's a thing. Alright, get the twists. Oh, one, two, three, four. Yes. Five, it's a thing and immediate adverted. Six. Seven. Eight. No can hear. Nine. Eh, it's ten. a thing bombarded by DoorDash ad. <laughs> also. IKR. I know, right? <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. Sorry, I'm checking multiple things, trying to make sure that everything is nice and stable. Okay. Oh, 30 seconds. Uh, drink, 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 drink. Where's my drink? There's my drink.
10 seconds before ads are done. Fuck y'all, it's not water. I it's live. soda. I live! Nice. Watch someone with a sub with a sub is going to clip that. Speaking of subs, though, if you guys want to uh, subscribe, if you guys have the means to, we have plenty of perks going on for uh, folks of various tiers. Back. If you have your Twitch connected to your Discord, DoorDash couldn't keep M down. <laughs> if you have your Discord uh, connected to your Twitch and you're part of the uh, Discord server, there's going to be a dedicated section for subscribers where subscribers get behind the scenes content for, say, our second YouTube channel with our Conlane showcases, dissociative analyses, and more, which this video, like this live stream, will actually be edited for a proper uh, video for that second channel. So if you want to see a sneak peek on how that edit is going to go, you can become a subscriber. Tier 1 will give you basic behind the scenes content and access to, to the Discord. It's dedicated little you category. You can try to improve singing Tier to the two. background for the inspiration. They improve, you can try to improve singing to the background for the inspiration. I came from an advert what? to a road to dusk advert triple A. <laughs> if you want to uh, be Tier 2, you're also going to have access to community nights that are specifically dedicated to higher tier subscribers on the discord server tier three when my commissions come back up will give you a 20 percent off discount because i draw shit everything that you see when it comes to my overlay i did so yeah road to advertisement road to advertise a hey, is not selling out if it's your own shit <laughs> That said, um, also, Bunny, you never said what song I should do. Also, I can't improv lyrics on the spot for a song that was made for Sell me. <laughs> merchandising. It's all about the merchandising. Improv. I'm not good with improv. I haven't done improv since fucking high school. <laughs> You have to be in a very specific headspace for improv, buddy. I'm a specific headspace for improv. <laughs> Quick, someone if give me. Is there, can you ask them if they ever do sleep related shenanigans or is their identity coincidental? If you're not selling out because it's your own, you're now a sell-in. <laughs> I'll make a man out of you. Hellfire. <laughs> Alright, we're getting oh, some Disney requests. Oh, I have a requests. question. I hope it's okay. How different can the personalities be? The Wellerman. Improv is fun. Alright, fuck it. I'll do the Wellerman coming up. But how different uh, different identities can be? It's going to vary. Wrote the sell um, <laughs> Um, again, like I said, with like the difference between headmates and uh, fragments as subcategory terms, headmates tend to have their own likes, dislikes, preferences, opinions, pronouns, gender identities, all that jazz in contrast to one another. A fragment tends to prioritize a headspace or a directive. So fragments tend to be a lot less, for lack of a better phrase, unique than various headmate types. That said, there can be some headmates that may be similar to each other in regards to various opinions or things of that nature, but are still their own people. So it's all just going to vary on circumstance to circumstance. All right. You know what? Let's go closer to the water for Wellerman. There once was a ship that put to sea in the name of the ship was a Billy and I forgot the fucking second part. Hold on, I need the lyrics. Fuck! I'm, I'm committing to the bit. Oh, and I can't type! Where's my keyboard? It's not what I want.
and I'm only going to sing like the first verse and chorus. Just because I'm not going to be able to have all of this memorized super quick. Road to floating in place. <laughs> there once was a ship that put to sea, and the name of the ship was Ability. Let's see. The winds blow up her bow, dip down, oh blow, my bully boys blow. Soon may the watermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when a tongue is done, we'll take our leave and go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, no, improv can be a lot of fun. Now it's... a silly question, maybe. Yeah. Can the different identities have different food preferences? So like you like cake, but another hates it kind of deal? Yes. Is there anything you do for specific likes and yes, dislikes yes, like yes, that Yes, 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 yes. One of our littles, for example, constantly craves chicken nuggets with honey mustard. Whereas me, I am a diehard for shrimp. <laughs> uh, we have some folks that tend to prefer like a shit ton of meat, like make it beef, steak, like pork, all that shit. Um, some of us have the different preferences when it comes OML, to like so cute. different like um, breakfast, uh, different breakfast meals. Some of us more prefer cereal. Some of us prefer like particular. Uh, sandwiches. Some of us don't give a shit and we'll eat whatever is in the fucking pantry. <laughs> Pranking your headmate by popping their least favorite food into your mouth prior to them fronting. Three, you would be surprised how often that has happened. <laughs> also, glad... Glad... <laughs> I could give you a flipping cute gasm from that, Drake. But yeah, some of us Suck can have wasabi, our own preferences. Uh, some of us can even have different preferences when it OMG. comes to drinks. Um, like some of us have different comfort foods. Some of us have different textures that we don't like, whether it's food or even textures when it comes to clothing. Some of us have different preferences when it comes to certain outfits, different colors, um, different things that we like to do. Different games that we binge on for comfort. All vary. Some of us even have um, different comfort characters. Like for Ren, that's Burnett. For me, um, like for Kagi and I, um, it would be Sora and Riku from the Kingdom Hearts series. But ye. Let me get a little closer to camera. Do you have any interesting stories on OSDD? Captions said Sora hmm. and Rika XD. Okay. Sora and Rika. So like one headmate can be the artistic <laughs> one and the other is the musical one. Can you all mm. have different talents? I have a question that went unanswered but also not required to answer it if it was a bat. Oh, hold on. Let me check your answer, uh, Tree. Was it the pranking your headmate? Because I thought I replied to that earlier. Oh, for Swill. Can you ask them if they ever do sleep-related shenanigans or is, that, or is their identity coincidental? So... Swill in the system started off as a fragment um, when it came to us being forced into situations of being the therapist friend without our consent. People just barging themselves onto us, needing a person to vent to because we always try to be, at least me, Road, typically tries to be a really helpful person and knows how much venting can be helpful. But being forced to be the rubber duck in a situation without our consent, without our consent, can be very just soul crushing. And oftentimes, Swill would pop up in that situation to try and help, like to try and help us be emotionally detached, so that someone can just have a literal 
rubber duck or literal brick wall to talk to while they're just going off because we'd have folks especially co-workers in the past who would vent to uh, vent to us about a situation without our consent for a half hour to like an hour completely destroying like our lunch um at uh, at our workplace for a time swill similar to Vuntikins, has turned into that has become his own that has become their own fully fleshed identity and with that their sense of self and their sense of directive actually kind of changed from being that uh, from being that wall it kind of changed into aspects of like paralysis demons uh, which obviously uh, one of the most prominent forms of paralysis demon is a sleep paralysis be- demon um, and Swill just kind of ran with that when it came to incorporating themselves into like our uh, VTuber lore Uh, do, 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 do. A headmate can be an artistic one, and another one can be a musical. Yes, yeah, sounds pretty quack. Sorry, not sorry, but still sorry. <laughs> uh, can all of you have different talents? Um, I would say so. Yes. Um, I don't think it comes off as prominent when it comes to our system, but. We at the very least have very different interests. Um, a lot of us collective, um, we have many members of our system that are musically inclined just cause we were raised in a very musical home for better and for worse uh, as a kid. So music and aspects of like music theory, singing, acapella, playing certain instruments, it's already ingrained in a few of us. Some of us have more preferences, like some of us prefer more to sing, some of us prefer to play piano, some of us prefer to compose, some of us prefer to do whatever the hell else in relation to music. But a lot of us do tend to have um, musical and other forms of artistic prowess just because of our body's experiences. Um, I will note that one... Archetype, one stereotypical aspect of dissociation that we actually show is variations in handwriting. My handwriting is sloppy as shit, but other members of my system have even worse or even better handwriting than me. get even more interesting when you have say, introjects or uh, an identity that comes into the system based on a source because some of them may be connected to perceptions of memories of their source um, some may not and it can get kind of interesting Alright, which one of you is likelier into grunge metal? XD, I kid I mean, I am arguably the most musically diverse because I can go from like new age, soft kind of music like Enya from the 80s and 90s to like modern deathcore like Lorna Shore. <laughs> um, others tend to lean more for like JRPG OSTs or more immersive foley kind of stuff some tend to prefer more lullabies tend to some tend to prefer specifically certain forms of like new metal and symphonic metal um some prefer pop various variations of pop um yeah Randomly blasts Stradivarius. 
We've actually never heard of Stradivarius. I require noms, but will still be listening. So here's a question for the space. If you pull a rope between your hands, are you playing tug of war with your headmates? <laughs> if you pull a rope between your hands, are you playing tug of war with your with your headmates? That I would say varies on how the system perceives where like I guess the working space is. Um depending on the level of imagination that a system has, which yes, there can be dissociative folks with a fantasia. Um depending on how you perceive like your working space or your inner DM'd. world can dictate how you feel that you interact with the world which can get very complicated uh, when you're on like uh, when you're under like certain influences such as alcohol oh. I, I have to float Thank you for that, Drake. But yeah, hope I'm making sense with that. I know like it's for... come up that headmates can have romantic and similar relationships. Is it common to have to resolve conflicts between headmates? That our system hasn't had to um, deal with as much. Um, more often because me, Road... I tend to be up the vast majority of the time. We all still see each other as individual, so we tend to be pretty open with other members of the system having their own relationships, so long as people that they are in a relationship with acknowledge that we are dissociative and certain partners may not be up all the time. So polyamory when you're a system can get mighty complicated. <laughs> Like, for example, um, you have me that is in a relationship with the Nuke Tears, as well as Top Hat. Um, you have uh, Ren in my system that is in a relationship with Serenity from the Nuke Tears. Kagi from my system that's in a relationship with Meladius. Um, You have Yasha in my system that's in a relationship with Damania. Uh, you have Domino from my system that's in a relationship with fucking... Oh, why am I kalooped? Uh, you have Arambor in our system that's in a relationship with Lustrea from the Nicktares. And there's even one relationship in our system that is internal Imogen with Vox. So, yeah. I just realized that I may have been muted in the game, so my, my mouse is not doing the blast. What is something you have learned that is really interesting about Ost? One thing that I that we've learned about OSTD that's interesting, namely the the that namely how OSTD differs from DID in the fact that OSTD doesn't always have complete amnesic breaks. Because when I rode was first questioning if I was dissociative, because I started asking questions when I first met someone who was actually dissociative, a former mutual of top hat and ours um i had this ableist idea and assumption that oh well i can't be dissociative uh because i don't have complete amnesic breaks i only have this kind like i only feel partly connected like i still feel partly connected to my memories of my trauma but i'm not completely disconnected like did says i have to be turns out OSTD, especially OSTD-1B, which is what we were diagnosed with, does not require that complete amnesia break. So ye. Oh, I have a good one. Say in your friend group, there is someone one of the headmates doesn't like or doesn't trust. Do you all just talk it out? Or follow the gut feeling of that headmate. That's going to vary on system to system for us because we hold a lot to mutual accountability and also healthy multiplicity. We tend to try and talk things out amongst ourselves internally to figure out what the issues are, um, whether we feel that the issue needs to be talked about with the like 
the person in question outside of the system, various things like that. Other people may go more gut feeling, either consensually uh, with the system or just instinct, letting instincts take over. It's going to vary from situation to situation, from body to body, system to system. Does one member of a system ever enter a relationship with another member from the same system? Uh, does a member of a system ever enter, enter a relationship with another member from the same system? Yes, that can very much happen. That's, again, like I said, with Imogen and Vox in our own system. Um, we've... While some people may think of it not so great because it can come off akin to like what fandoms tend to call like self-cessed every alter like every identity is their own identity and they have their own preferences and choices sometimes it's just holy sometimes it's just sometimes it just feels more comfortable to have a relationship with someone who is more easily there also bonnie derp thank you for the raid could we get a shout out oh you're already on it thank you celine bye yeet uh bunny and for those that uh, bunny derp and for those that have hopped in so, oh, let Hi, me turn everyone. off. I will turn off the TTS. Okay. But um, for those that are hopping in, don't know what we're doing here. Uh, we are doing a uh, DID Awareness Day Q and A regarding uh, like DID uh, and associative trivia, as well as any questions that you have regarding me and my system. Because hey, dissociative over here. So yep. Who better to talk about dissociative knowledge than someone who is part of the community? Sorry, just wanted TTS off so we don't get distracted with welcomes. Gotcha. But yeah, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to ask away. Thank you for answering all my questions. Hope they've been good. I feel like I understand you better now. Absolutely, Angel. Ah. <laughs> Gray! JPAC Gray! Thank you so much for the raid! Hope you're doing well! I haven't seen you before. It's pretty neat to have you over. For those that are hopping in and don't know what we do around here, this is the Road to Dusk. You can call me Road Dusk. Anything that you would call a friend. I am a dream usher, so I focus on sleep, dreams, and the imagination to help create an environment where people learn to be the better versions of themselves. We have a DID Awareness Day stream tonight dedicated to dissociative knowledge from a dissociative system. If you guys want to become part of the community where you can get more knowledge or even just talk casually with us hang out whatever feel free to become part of the discord do know that like our streams the discord is 18 plus uh you have 15 minutes to verify that you've read the rules otherwise you will be temporarily booted by one of the bots meant to curb against hate rates and trolls we do will be our lgbtq 2 spirit plus neurodivergent disability and mental health forward and we also do our best to advocate and uplift by pod voices regarding their own experiences so ye double ray with a bun noise also, self sets just makes me think of someone being caught out for math. <laughs> I mean, what is. But what, what. What is sex between two members of, of the same system, if not mutual masturbation? <laughs> I mean, if you have the chance to make out with yourself, do so, especially if they're your rule 63! <laughs> but yeah, if anyone is hopping in that doesn't know a whole lot when it comes to like, D like DID, OSCD, other dissociative disorders, or even stuff related to systemhood outside of clinical knowledge, and you guys just want a little more info, Feel free to ask away, even if uh, if I've answered it before, I don't mind repeating. This is how Road dies, not with a bang, but with a laughter. Only meaning to love yourself. Preach. <laughs> yeah, also, um, for those that did not realize when I was doing the twist. Um, I do not have any form of full body tracking at the moment. I would like to get some. 
I think I put one up on my throne, but it's kind of on the pricey side. Um, it's similar to like slime trackers, but it has a little more finesse to it. Um, if you guys want info on that or any other stuff that I've been eyeing, uh, feel free to type in explanation point throne. Um, there you'll be able to see my wish list, anything that I've been eyeing from various candies and electronics, including full, those full uh, body tracking little doickies. Attempt it once again to make a motion tracker and I fuck. I fucked it up and gave up. No, that's totally understandable. I think um, this. I know like the the more popular uh, slime trackers uh, right now that are the most affordable do have their info open source for people to be able to make their own. I can only imagine how complicated that is. Road, real question: Why are you a cool nerd? <laughs> I mean, I mean, we know that I'm a nerd. I'm wearing glasses for fuck's sake, and I have a con lane in my system, and I have fucking VTuber lore. <laughs> Slime VR has a whole guide on how to make their trackers. Yo. Which, speaking of con lanes, if you guys want to know info in regards to the con lane that we have in our v in our VTuber lore. You can type in explanation point card, which will give you access to our website, which has two YouTube channels, one of them being the VOD channel, the other being our secondary channel, where we need, where we not only have con lane showcases, but also this edited into a more better video format, as well as other dissociative analyses, including one that I plan for analyzing Kingdom Hearts from a dissociative lens. If you want to sneak peek on that, feel free to actually check out the VOD from last year for DID Awareness Day, where we did a live analysis through the entire playthrough of Roxas's uh, tutorial in Kingdom Hearts 2. E. Hey, we have the Vitoras! How you doing? I am hyper right now. <laughs> I did not expect this many raids today. Holy fuck. <laughs> self sess being a euphemism for masturbation. I lose rent free in my brain. <laughs> but yeah, as a reminder, um, I do that self sess wins. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> no. Vitoras, you know that that is a particular name. That that is a particular name for a ship, right? You know that's the name of a ship, right? <laughs> oh Lord, oh God's Almighty! Hell yes, that's what's. No, I did not. Sweetheart, supernatural, Sam and Dean Winchester. <laughs> but as a reminder um while we didn't get super high last month that's perfectly fine uh i am currently wanting to try and see if we can get to three consecutive months of a hundred uh subscription points really right when i'm doing my ad right when i'm doing the spiel ads go off oh fuck you sideways twitch <laughs> Everybody, hold on. <laughs> the timing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, I will save the spiel for after ads. For anyone that is subscribed that is watching right now, a massive thank you to not only you coming over, but also having a subscription to like help me out. Obviously, it financially supports me. We have plenty, but well, we have quite a few things set up for y'all as perks uh, in various tiers, which we have set up now, not only on here on Twitch, but also on Picardo. So if you would rather support me over on Picardo, 
uh, not on Picardo, on Kofi than here because Twitch currently takes um, a pretty decent chunk out of subscriptions that I get. Um, it's completely fine if you migrate over to Kofi uh, because your uh, tier will be respected on Kofi as it is here on Twitch. So tier one on here on Twitch will be the same as tier one on Kofi, tier two to tier two, tier three to tier three. Feels like forever. Star, uh, feel free to put uh, the clip over in the Discord server. It's like forever since I heard the Winchesters. Everybody do the flop. Thank you for the flop. Um, but as a reminder, uh, we are currently trying to see if I can get to 100 sub points for three consecutive months in order for me to become part of the Plus program when, when it becomes available for affiliates starting at least May. Um, we have various perks for all the different tiers. All tiers getting access to behind the scenes content related to the second uh, YouTube channel that we have. Tier 2 and Tier 3 having access to subscriber-specific community nights. Tier 3 having access to a 20% off coupon available at any time when my commissions are back open because I do have a backlog at the moment from Donathon's, uh, from Donathon incentives. If you want to support me financially, not only can you support me here on Twitch, if you want to be sure that more money comes to my pocket, you can also go to my Kofi, uh, where, again, that's where my commissions would be, but you can also uh, send your subscriptions over there. Or you can also check out my throne, which includes various technologies and like various items that I've been having my eye on that my poor ass can't afford. <laughs> if you want to become, let's see. Oh, animal noise is here, not a cat. Fine, fuck it. <laughs> my my avatar fucking <laughs> <laughs> I am a corgi if if I somehow Okay, here's an idea. Here's a fun idea and I will edit the uh, subscriber thing. If we get to a hundred, if we get to like 50 uh, subs, I'll, I'll have to put it at 50 uh, just for there to be some sort of milestone. 50 subs, and I will try and find somebody to commission to make me an, a furry avatar of my corgi self. Do people want that? Do people want that? Do people want the furry corgi? Huh? Bork, bork. Spee. Okay, Spee says yes. How many people want... Uh, how many people want a furry corgi? Y'all are silent now. Wow! <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Bang saying yes. Clipped. Thank you, Tree. <laughs> If you were to move forward, it would have looked like a jump scare. You, you, you want me to do that again? You want me to do that again? Oh, hell, yeah, I can do it again. <laughs> I was like, yes, to furry world. Hold up, my high ass is multitasking while breathing. <laughs> Don't you bore the chat. Free of the corgi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. If y'all want to get a head start, get me to 50 uh, subs or 50 sub points more specifically. And how, whatever money that I get from that come April, I will use that money to commission somebody to make me a VR chat avatar for the corgi. TTS on. Yes. Please and thank you. They are the magic words. Okay. There we go. That helps me a ton. Thank you, thank you. Road and system, thank you for answering my questions and being my friend. I really want to lay down now, but will be lurking for you, hun. Yee! No, you. I do have some you money. You lay down, you around. sleep well. Do what you got to. Do you have some money? I do laying not around? desire to be consumed. Thank if, you. 
you guys support us financially, please only do so if you have the means to. We appreciate like the support, but if it's going to put you in any financial strain, please prioritize yourselves. We are in financial strain, so we know how it feels. We know how it feels to want to help others financially, even when we are not in the best situation. We will not be hurt if you need to prioritize yourself. Car loan for In the fact, road. we insist that you prioritize yourselves. <laughs> Car loan for the road. Drake! I already dropped probably more than I should, haha. I did not desire to be consumed, thank you. I already dropped probably more than I should. Free? You're topic. not as bad I want as Yo's and Florg. Tiny bit of news, if allowed. Oh. It is I'll advised to consume me. Is you will have a better to time consume consuming me. the ghost pepper chip. Me yeah, Star, feel free. Considering we're having a bit of a lull and now it's just been kind of casual, people are still able to like ask questions related to DID stuff if they want. But now is mainly a time for just chilling, talking, whatever. Yes, B will give you indigestion. <laughs> right, what's the time? She eats too much butter. After much, much, much deliberation and turmoil in a crying wallet, I finally allowed myself to buy a new PC. Let's go! It will be shipped out on the 12th. I'll chance that get over here, speed. I got butter. I'm very bad for your cholesterol. <laughs> but no, that's a super awesome star. I'm yeah, super yeah, excited yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, awesome. Congrats, star. Yeah, no, I'm super excited Let's to see how your streams AR. will go with the new computer. Was it the NZXT PC? B. Anyone? Throw butter. I Do get. not try to put as much yes, money w, as Cap as Cap Florg and, and Yozla Valeria have, because those two are amazing. I love them, but they are also. They have also put so much money down. So much fucking money. <laughs> like, y'all y'all see the chart. Y'all y'all see the chart. Both Yo's and Florg Swap. are at first and second place. Both of them at 30 subs. Because I couldn't even stream tonight with Earl Thee and my laptop blue screened in less than an hour. Oh shit! I am so sorry, Star. Oh, That's no, not fun. Yeah, and you had just replaced the battery on that thing, didn't you? Like it reset itself. But also, and like, damn. That's ooh. All because a driver needed an update so OBS wouldn't launch. Ooh. Ooh. Hold on. Speaking of consumption, on. my Fuck. cats must consume. BRB. Did you try turning it off and on again? Whoa. Thank you for the for ten gifted subs. Jesus oh Christ on a bicycle. <laughs> well, ha ha. I got one. Thank you, you. At AC Bunny, one thanks for the gift sub. Holy moly! Road, why do you become Red Panda? Why do I become Red Panda? What? At AC Bunny, one I, thanks I was confused for the gift with that. sub. Oh well. Okay, two more people left. <laughs> you lift your arms up above your head like a Red Panda when Fry 10 XD. Someone, like, fucking screenshot this, if you can. I'll try and be in a spot where I'm not covered by, um, like, any overlay stuff so, like, y'all can get a picture for memes. Let me know! Let me know! Let me know! He said whilst Fuck. covered by an overlay. Fuck. Clip. Okay, other side. Shush. Ah! Ed Aani won one a sub. 
<laughs> go in the middle XD. Go in the middle? He Fine. said whilst Fine. covered by another overlay. Why is my overlay too big? Got it. Yay! Okay. Stay still, damn you. I am trying to stay still, damn it! Someone clipped that whole ordeal and put, like, fucking Benny Hill as the music. But yeah, as a reminder for folks that are subs that have been given a uh, gift sub. You couldn't go straight or stay still if your life depended on it. Honey, I'm not straight. You expect me to go straight? For anyone that has uh, subscribed or has gotten a gift sub, if you have your Twitch and your Discord exactly connected, point. you will have access to a special little section of the Discord server dedicated to subscribers. Um, so if you are not part of the Discord community yet and want to become part of that, you have access to those features. If I have any mod available to do explanation point Discord, Anyone that hops asking in, you have 15 minutes to verify like that you've read the rules, otherwise you'll be temporarily booted by one of the bots with curb against hate raids and trolls. Asking Road to stay still, it's like asking someone with ADHD to- oh wait. Yeah, fucker, I have- a, a, I am autistic and ADHD. Hello? <laughs> I said it aloud. Um, why do I still have anxiety about buying the PC? Because it's a lot of money, and it can be stressful to try and put money onto yourself, especially when mm. you need it. When you're, uh, so I can get like that anxiety and that fear star, but I don't deserve the PC. And you do deserve the PC because you've put so much effort into streaming and put so much effort into basically like you, like even like even if you're not streaming, you deserve. The Tackle PC, star. because you've put money down for it, and you need it for various reasons, whether it is for personal reasons like gaming, or for social reasons such as interacting with folks online or having access to no outlets and knowledge. You deserve a PC. You deserve a good PC. You deserve something that makes you happy, you and that, that goes money. for everyone here. You do what you want. I have no room Flails for PC, hard. I have laptop. Eh, valid. But I still have to finish paying this debt. Slow and steady, Star. You got this. God, don't make me think about debt. <laughs> I'm in a crisis. <laughs> Melt into a puddle. I have talked myself out of be buying this since I got my refund. No more finance talk. Yeah, okay, Please. let's switch topics. Debt is a hate crime. <laughs> I have stuff for PC set up, but room not big for me and my brother XP. Ah. But yeah, let's switch topics, y'all. I know there's a bit of a delay when it comes to chat, but. Let, let's migrate. Monitors. Crying. Happy 15 months, Road. Lexi! Thank I you do? for 15 months. Also, your girl better be streaming. Uh, cause I wanna raid out to her when we can. Lexi. Uh, what time is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roughly. One more. It is 1018. Lexi yeah. is on one vacation. More, one more point. And we're at 50 I think. sub points, meaning I whatever money that I get uh, for this month yeah, she's in April, now, I am actually. putting to getting a, a VR chat model and 3D model of a furry version of me in my corgi form. If y'all want the corgi, y'all y'all better fucking sub. <laughs> Which, don't I mean, forget, you also have access to certain perks in the Discord server if you're not part of it already as a, subs as a subscriber. Tempting to throw a 50. Bunny, you already threw 50 bucks. <laughs> you already threw like 50 bucks for 10 subs. Flip a mad lad. Also, you know what's funny? 
I have no idea what PC things are good. Guys help thoughts of my bank haunt me. Hey, let's try and migrate the subject off of finances and debt stuff. That was requested earlier. I am. E. I am a med lad. Yes, please. I am talking about compo opers. I'm gonna squeeze the sap out of you, bird. Tree, just think of how nice this 76 degree weather is. Hey, yo, 76 degree weather, that sounds nice. Spi. Ima bap you. Yes, it's a lovely 76 degrees. Runs. I... I'm a Okay, now I'm assuming this is some sort of joke. 76 Celsius? I was thinking Fahrenheit! That's like, what, 23, 24, it's 25 C? No way. The only thing I know about PC is RAM, graphic card, and something about Hertz. Yeah, Hertz are going to be important when it comes to your monitor. Um, how high the Hertz is basically helps keyboard. to dictate how fast um, the frame rate what is and keyboard? how well the monitor can keep up with higher frame rates. Um, higher Hertz, such as like uh, 144, is optimal at the current era of different electronics to keep up with high-end games. What be good monitor? What be good monitor? Oof. I don't know, because I need to get um, some I good monitors for myself, because the monitors that I have only go up to 60 I hertz. I want a second one. How much bandage for 144 megahertz? <laughs> 76 degrees Celsius is an inside joke from a previous PC I had that had a weird bug where it wanted to warn me about the temp of my PC oh. even when it was fine. So every so often it would show an alert saying that my PC was 76 degrees Celsius. I mean, 76 Celsius, I don't I remember a as a good monitor, temperature nice for computers or for computer internals or not. Thank you, monitor, and it's nice because it can oh, swivel. Yo. And now we remind Tree of the beautiful 76 degrees. <laughs> Yeez. Alright, while we are, like, talking, chilling, and whatnot, I'm tempted to take, like, a walk around in, uh, this map, just so that people have, like, some visual stuff, um, just what for, like, some change in the scenery and whatnot. The overlay How do you feel about PC that? Stats. It said my motherboard was 200 degrees Celsius, which was definitely not correct. <laughs> Let's go on an adventure you -er. Just check advanced display and you can see how high the hertz can be. Yes, my fave DPS and Overwatch, Soldier 76 degrees. <laughs> also, let me actually take something. I am in the jungle. The pan are hunting me. I can't see these bastards. Guess I better start running. How do I take this off of being a window? There we go. There we go. So. Who's ready for a little adventure? So, obviously, occasionally you'll hear like some water stuffs. Um, but how about we go on an adventure and find some crystals? Aqua. I'm going to follow this oh, little beam. Oh, actually, Alex may be hoping off soon. If we oh, can't no. raid tonight, it's no big deal, hun. Okay. Yeah, thank you for letting me know, Lexi. I was hoping to raid out to Alex, but if she's not having the spoons, um, that's completely understandable. Hello? I am under the water. <laughs> oh, where did that fucker go? splash was loud. Roads under the water. Help him. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, we both have to be up at 5 a.m. for the airport. Yeah, all good, hon. Do what you got to. Swim, swim. Gotta keep swimming. The Just underwater world swimming. of underwater. Welcome to Atlantis <laughs> customer service. How can I help you? <laughs> I swear, if if this becomes like a, a regular thing and a meme enough to where people are wanting like 
you some took on like an Indian tone merman for no reason. form of me or something. I'll figure something out to fucking do it. Hi, welcome to Chili's. Wait, where's? Yes, your air bubbles ain't working. Oh. Oh! I didn't know there was an elevator that whole fucking time. Steve, I've been to this world food? like six times, and I never acknowledged the fucking elevator. Okay. Road to elevation. Apparently. Cause ADHD oh. brain go BRRR. This is the thing. Anyone ever watch Bojack Horseman and remember that episode where Bojack was visiting the underwater city? And you want to fucking run. Because <laughs> I think of butter, the best food. Okay, I'm going to change uh, the camera real quick, just because y'all need to see how pretty this thing is. Look at that. Look at I it! staple your mouth shut in. The thing looked like a pineco from Pokemon. It oh. did, though. <laughs> Pretty. Pretty. Okay. I think butter can get past staples. We do not condone stapling people's mouths here. No. Nope. Can it eat it? Okay, forewarning. Gonna have another loud but splash coming up in three, two, one. I need to splush. I need to get back. That's not that loud. I thought people said that the splash it's was loud, loud earlier. So I just wanted to forewarn folks in case. Speak for yourself, Star. Oh wait, this will be you an area for later. You are all bound by headphones. Um, I not. shall book Ooh. you all. I am free of that prison. Ooh. This is gonna be pretty. Let me change my view so that you guys can. Ah. O O L Cloud Place. Yeah, hold on. But I am not above smacking people with books. Oh, do I need to? Oh, oh, there it is! There it is! Look at you are free of the prison of headphones, but we are stuck in the prison of hearing everything in your house, including your PC and ourselves. Star. Way all. Oh. He's a sky whale. Look at it. Look at him. But my ears are pristine. Be pretty. It went behind the clouds. I know there's a particular it's area so that, um, has like music to go with it. I'm worried about the music just because I don't want to get copyright struck, so I don't want to go too far with that. Whale and Sky want to eat. No, whales are friends, not food. Space Whale. Alright, back in the water I go. Three, two, one. But Hunter. <laughs> Thank for a warning. E. Road, there's a world with a little cardboard box city where you can just slap the buildings around. Oh my but god, that is Blubber adorable. Nuggets. That sounds fucking adorable. Send me the world link, please, and thank you. Tasty Blubber. <laughs> I'll try to remember what it was called. E. B. 
be while we're still streaming if there's folks that have any questions um regarding anyone in the system utter dissociative knowledge that you think that i answered before that you weren't uh here for feel free to ask away like i keep saying i don't mind repeating oh 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 they're here they're here the are here look at them ah oh, big boys look at them yas and okay If that is not like the perf the perfect like chill kind of screensaver, I don't know what is. Just having three big old whales just swimming in the sky. I have question. E, yeah, go for it. Do I have spots where I can sit? What? 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 When? Thank you for five more gifted subs. Holy shit. You getting that corgi? Yeah, we're getting the corgi. We're getting the corgi. Thank you. <laughs> corgi. What are we cheering Corgi now? That reminds me, for folks that are subscribed, you have access to the Corgi emote called Big Ol' Eyes. If y'all want to spam that, go for it. The in celebration of getting a Corgi avatar coming up. When Corgi come out, I shall consume. <laughs> Well, let me set things to low quality just so that things are not as Sips bad. Sips my anymore. sprite and munches on tacos because yes. Wait, what? Sips my sprite and munches on tacos? I mean, you do you. Sprite and tacos sounds pretty all right. Should add some butter to that. Start. <laughs> no, why would you put butter on Runs. tacos? Oh, I why remember. Why the fuck too. would you put butter on tacos today? I remember to- I lost- Hey! Look at you! Need to go up these stairs. Near. Yeah. Okay. Let's go find Better good. the but other not one. All you need. Which this area is fucking gorgeous. This area is gonna be gorgeous! All right, where are you going? I'm gonna wait for you. Not to on go my damn tacos. Out. Not on my damn tacos. <laughs> but rain, 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 but rain. Thank you so much for the rain. But rain, 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 but rain. But rain, but rain, but rain, but rain. Yo, okay, hold on. I gotta turn on TTS. I gotta turn on TTS. But rain, 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 I am friendos with our beloved uh, Succubus streamer, Ast uh, Astro's official, aka Lexi Fleer, the beloved uh, friendo to Alexandria Page, who just raided. Holy shit. Uh, today we are doing a uh, live stream QA related to uh, DID Awareness Month, but well, not month, day, because one, I'm dissociative, specifically OSDD, and two, just I generally want to give more knowledge when it comes to uh, dissociative stuff, both clinical and non-clinical. 
if you want to keep up with that, if you have any questions, feel free to ask away. I do not mind repeating. If you also want to be part of a community that is inclusive to disability and LGBTQI2, Spirit Plus, neurodivergent disability, mental health, and also tries to do our best we to uplift right navigate with BIPOC intro. voices regarding their own experiences, feel free Fucking to become Bezos. part of our Discord. Do another one you hop in, you have 15 minutes to verify that you have read the rules, otherwise you will be terribly booted oh, by one of the bots meant to curb against hate raids and trolls. So yeah. Yeah, this area is great. Jefferson I love this spot. B, remind me to lock the fridge on Taco. <laughs> B, uh, for those that do not know, Alexandria Page is a wet... Uh, ah, <laughs> is a uh, webtoon comic artist, the author and, uh, and the illustrator for Jean and Clark. If you guys love... A combo of comedic, uh, supernatural, existential, um, paranormal kind of stuff, uh, with a uh, that with a uh, gay couple as the head. Feel free to check out Alex's content. She is just now getting into streaming proper, so let's be sure to show her some love and help Very her get cool. to affiliate as soon as possible. Oh, hold on. What? There we go. Very cool. Yay. Also, why is my chat not updating visually for me? There we go. The wet, what? When did I say anything about being wet? Biggie. Um. If anyone wants to become part of the Discord, especially if you subscribe, there are special perks that you guys got uh, from being part of a particular uh, subscriber uh, specific category in the server to behind the scenes content for our secondary YouTube channel, as well as other perks for going to tier two, tier three, and so on. We are trying to get to a uh, hundred sub points in order to keep that for three months so that I can become part of the plus program when it becomes available for affiliates come May so that we can potentially get a higher pay grade when it comes to any stuff that we get from Twitch. If you guys want to support that, feel free. You can also actually support us financially on Kofi where currently commissions are closed but they will be opening sometime in the summer um, or you can also go on our throne where we have some various pieces of tech, candies, and whatnot that we've been eyeing that we cannot afford at this time. Bye ye. Thank you all so much for all the follows, by the way. I was not able to keep track of who all followed. But holy moly, we have had so many raids today. My brain cannot compute. <laughs> Also, I might actually need to. Ruoaaod, go look at Box World. Road.exe has stopped working. I don't know how much my com my uh, computer it. will handle oh, whoops, XD. trying to go to another world right now, just because um, I've been noticing on my end visuals uh, kind of vary graphically. Occasionally, they will go very bit crushed, but then they'll stabilize. So just for safety, I would rather stay in this world for now, show you guys uh, how everything is in here, and I will go to the box world on my own time. Oh, but I need to turn this back to medium quality. I don't like this uh, okay. type of like blue haze. I don't know how well it's showing for you guys, but sometimes it shows on... Um, my end for like my peripheral or glad or we could that rage out and show you some love road. and it just are does not Air look link? right are you using air link i'm actually using nice. the steam link uh glad we could raid out and show you some love the vibes are so nice hell yeah also uh, as a reminder lexi if you or alex uh, have any questions related to like did stuff other members in the system the that you've link. met or have heard of feel free to ask um our philosophy is that 
there is very much a difference between ignorance and bigotry. Ignorance is is simply not knowing something. I have a few bigotry is refusing to do anything about it. That suspect me of it. There's nothing wrong with being ignorant know. about a situation, Most so long as you're life, open to learning slash more. Them. We slash us slash our slash ours are things I prefer to refer Ooh. to myself as. But I, I don't know if that, that have it, And a few friends that suspect we me of it, to but I do not know most of my life I need them. To get ready we for hours or things are preferred I fly to refer out to in a myself few hours. as. I don't know if that counts. I mean, one thing I will say, similar to a lot of folks in autistic spaces, diagnosis is not required. Self-diagnosis can be a very important thing, especially when you want to try and advocate yourself if you're wanting to get an official diagnosis. If you want to self-diagnose yourself as being dissociative, there's nothing wrong with that so long as like so long as you don't assume your so long as you don't monolith yourself while self-diagnosing. Cuz a lot of people assume and mis and misrepresent self-diagnosis as putting yourself on a pedestal. That is not what self-diagnosis is. That's not what self-diagnosis ever has been. Where's my little spot where I can change my settings? Or my quality settings? Ah, here it is. Let's bring it back to medium. There we go. All right. I don't Alice? want to assume. I just always feel more comfortable solving my problems through multiple characters in comics that I make. But the characters are parts of myself that reason with each other. Me. Hey, if you don't feel comfortable with calling yourself um, anything under the dissociative umbrella, Sounds a bit that's like more than I understandable. Just... Like, I get not wanting to assume yourself and forcing yourself into a potential box that is not yours. Um, best thing I would say, just give yourself the kindness to use terms that you feel com comfortable with, and others will. I'll do so in turn. What are fictives? Fictives! So fictives are a form of interject. Um, interjects, like uh, I said a while back, are uh, headmates that are formed from a source. Fictives are one of two primary types of interjects. Fictives means that they come from a fictional source, whether it be from a video game, whether it be from a show. Um, even if the person that is, even if the fictive comes from like a live action show, if it is from a fictional source, say like Supernatural, they are a fictive. Now a factive, in contrast, is someone that is from real life. Someone that, that just comes IRL. Um, this can often be such as internet personalities. We have actually met some systems with factors of internet personalities such as Markiplier and Jacksepticeye, which that can get interesting. Um, we actually also have a factive of one of our siblings during a particular moment of their life. That factive has since very much branched off and figured out more about themselves to where their identity has become so much more than just being effective. Uh, DBS. Oh. Uh, thank you for the water. Let me get a drink super quick. Just gotta find my desk. There's my desk. I have something kind of similar. I have entities I placed in world building, but they originally came from myself. But then what was already present in my head fed off what I built in that world, and I basically mm. unintentionally fleshed out whatever the entities are in my head. I, I get what you mean by that. I think if you don't want to use terms in relation to dissociation in the clinical sense, there is a more open term, um, such as thought form. Do you guys feel comfortable using that in any way? If not, it's totally fine. I'm just giving you that uh, potential in case that's something that you feel comfortable with. Right, I'm putting my drink down. There we go. 
Hope you have been well, man. Been a minute. It has been a minute, BBS. Hope you've been doing well. Yeah, does doing a DID Awareness Day Q&A? No if you have any questions related to DID Mostly knowledge or our system, that are parts of my brain That I try to figure out on paper and understand. Like the talking cat I do is the logical part of my brain. The girl I do that is a bit of a klutz and can't cook and worries people is like me. The guy in the comics that has a crush on her. He's an artist with an anger issue at times. Mm -hmm. And my Fennec Fursana is the hyperactive always trying to be positive part of me. Always trying to cheer others up. Yo. I avoid clinical terms for myself just out of respect for people who are more officially diagnosed since I was kind of screwed out of an actual diagnosis of my own because weird psychiatrist slash. No, that's, that's completely Speaking understandable. Speaking of world building, does Oist have an internal world slash place? Yes. Um... One thing that we have noticed with talking with uh, various dissociative folks is that an inner world doesn't necessarily have connections to dissociation so much as it has to do with imagination. There can be some uh, systems with aphantasia, which makes trying to have an inner world and feeling like you have an inner world uh, difficult. How we perceive our inner world differs from what kind of imagination that we have. If we have hyperphantasia on the opposite end of, of the imagination spectrum, sometimes scenes can be too vivid, which can lead to aspects of synesthesia. Um, imagination can help to describe and build an inner world, but an inner world is just limited to dissociative I live, But we keep it moving, yeah, feel. Give it a buck without getting personal. I live. Fair. We keep moving. Well. Keep trucking, dude. What? B, when it comes to uh, assuming stuff related to inner worlds, also try and inform yourself in regards to how you describe things um, and how your brain perceives things. Imagination is a spectrum and it can make or break. I have tried explaining my brain at times as if I am walking through a dark corridor with lots of doors and each door leads to different things and different parts, but the hall is unending and there an open area that is just out in the moonlight. That sounds neat. Our inner world is a lot more complicated. Uh, when it comes to like our fronting space, we see a kind of like a combo between the uh, control room of the SS Enterprise from Star Trek The Next Generation and the gummy ship from the Kingdom Hearts series. Kind of mesh into one. But from there, there is a door that uh, allows an entryway into the inner world proper, which is this giant, uh, just floating island with hills on it and forests outside that surround a moat that then surround a hill that several houses are on that hold but the friends everyone that in our assume system. I have did say it would make sense based on the amount of trauma I have. Yeah, I will note that the while the vast majority of cases of those with dissociative well, the vast majority of those with DID and similar dissociative disorders do stem from trauma. There are some cases, while rare, still important to note, that may not come from trauma. Trauma is a spectrum. How our brains react to trauma is a spectrum. One person's uh, trauma may not, uh, may be, like, no trauma is going to be the same uh, amongst uh, individuals, whether a whether one body, a singlet, or uh, but whether one mind, a singlet, or a system with multiple. Um, and plus, everyone has various experiences, so don't try and put yourself in a game of trying to claim your trauma enough so many people, to be dissociated. So many people, even non-did folks, have a sort of mind palace. I might describe the non-did experience as visiting the palace every so often for reflection and meditation. I might describe the did and did adjacent experience as you or parts of you live in the mind palace. Would that make sense? 
Yes, I like that actually to think does make sense. The collective for you. average populace's way of seeing their head or mind as the Sukin place from Get Out. No! <laughs> That's definitely one way to think about it, DBS, yeah. It's been a while since I've watched Get Out, though. Damn. Also, might want to get away from the water just so that it doesn't overpower. I've actually used that comparison to explain to others what it is like not fronting lol. Yeah? For us, when it comes to not fronting, um, again, our fronting space is like that control room area cross between Star Trek and Kingdom Hearts. Being in that area means that you have influence on how the body interacts with the world, how you're doing things, whether you're at the mic being able to talk, or whether you're prioritizing typing or various uh, moving motions. Because there are times sometimes I feel it can like be one person doing everything. I feel like other I times it can me, be but I don't know how exactly one to thing describe each. the feeling. And I don't want to say stuff too openly because it is the internet and I just joined the chat. W. Yeah, I feel like something triggers a flip and I feel like I'm not me. I don't know how to ex exactly describe the feeling. Don't want to say stuff too openly because it's the internet and I just joined the chat. Completely understandable, Pyro. Um, do you know the concept of emotional bleeding? Um, that happens when someone else in the system or another entity in general inside the body influences emotions or generally their emotions may like leak out while another person is interacting. A very good example that I always go back to is Roxas in Kingdom Hearts 2 when Sora, Donald, and Goofy are hopping on the train to go to Yen Sid's tower. When everyone says goodbye to Hainer, Pence, and Olette, Sora cries Roxas's tears, but doesn't know why he is crying because he has had because he hasn't interacted with Roxas yet and doesn't know that Roxas is a part of him. Once in a while, I get these out-of-body experiences where I feel disconnected from myself and the world. I can also force a moment like that to trigger I found. It makes my brain feel funny. I've hey. always seen it as a way of disassociation, yeah, no? Like yes. I think the sunken place is a good visual of what it's like to disassociation when trying to explain to someone who's never done it, yeah, no? Yeah. And Tree, what you're describing sounds akin to derealization, uh, to... I feel like I would just be seen as Well, crazy more depersonalization rather than Because of how many times I have been in the ward. Oh, I feel like I would just be seen as crazy because of how many times I've been in the ward. I can only imagine... I... I can empathize a little I mean, bit. I'm still aware. I just while my weird. system and I have never been taken to a ward, we did um, willingly go to intensive outpatient and were ready to be put in a ward due to some things that happened in regards to our system that are way too personal for us to discuss here. I feel like I would just be, yeah. I mean, I'm still aware, but I feel weird. Yeah, what you were describing, Tree, reminds me a little bit of depersonalization. I've been to the psych ward a few times, but not for did related things. I've been to the psych ward a few times, but not for did related things. For those that don't know, the uh, derealization is one form of dissociation where you are disconnected from the body or disconnected from your sense of self. Um, sometimes it can feel like you are like say watching your your body being played in a first person or third person view 
That's how we tend to describe them when we've had de uh, depersonalization symptoms before. The realization, similarly, is when you are disconnected from reality, feeling like this kind of world or this kind of reality is not your own, or that you shouldn't be here. And derealization depersonalization disorder is actually its own thing there on are times the dissociative where I spectrum. I feel like I am just floating through life on autopilot but not feel like anything is real. Like I am constantly dreaming because my dreams feel so real that telling the difference between being awake and still dreaming gets confusing. It's always been that way for me for a really long time. Also, thank you for the stretchies. From the sounds Lucid of it, Pyro. I can do that. Yeah, lucid dreaming can do that, um, but also, if we're talking about dissociative terminology, it could be a sense of blurriness, whether induced by having others with, like, others in front with you, or influence from others that are farther out of fronting, or just it could happen to an individual identity without any influence. Blurriness is a sense of, a general term for disconnect from your sense of identity, um, either due to derealization, depersonalization, or other aspects of dissociation that may be influencing it. Uh, sometimes, like, using the term blurry, when we have mentioned being blurry, it can mean that we either have too many folks fronting at once to discern a concrete identity, pronouns, gender, things like that, or even it's one identity, one yeah, one being that feels more just like a light rather than a proper silhouette of a human being. I once had this lucid dream for some reason where two anime girls were chasing me around this very rectangular building. I don't know what they wanted, but I wasn't having it, flapped my arms, and flew away. Well, damn. <laughs> Let me move this a bit just so that I can see. I have BPD, but it is very yeah. hard for me to know who I am as a person. I have been asked before if I had no trauma and no bad things happen in life and had a good life, and was who I was before trauma, who would I be, and I couldn't answer because I didn't know what my actual true self is. Mew. That is, that is a mood, uh, Pyro, um, coming from a system that is autistic, ADHD, and has complex PTSD. Um, we've never been diagnosed with uh, borderline personality disorder, but we have been pathologized and assumed uh, to be borderline due to our ADHD symptoms. And even with ADHD, um, we've dealt with similar circumstances, namely just because ADHD, how CPSTD, our brain processes autism, certain anxiety, words and feelings and, and emotions is different so when people ask us like certain questions or certain things our brain and it varies from person to person in our system but our brain can struggle to and major connect depression. the dots in the way that someone is trying to imply in their question and it gets even worse when people are being ableist about it major depression mood we're on antidepressants that also help out with our anxiety. I also have BPD. Trauma happened so early in my life I wouldn't know how to answer a question like that either. Yeah, same with us, uh, while we don't have BPD. But I mask the depression and have had to for years because of work or friends or not wanting to be a burden. That is an absolute mood, Pyro. But yeah, the earliest time that we actually know that there were others outside of our um, original in our system was when the body was six. That was getting close to 20 years ago. <laughs> I probably misheard, but you mentioned it's rare but possible for systems to come about without traumatic influences. Is there an example for how that might happen or how one might learn about that being a thing? So, I could be wrong with this, but the last time that I looked up um, sources in relation to 
dissociative identity disorder studies, 90% of cases of dissociative identity disorder, specifically DID, not really looking at OSD or other dissociative disorders, come from sources of early childhood trauma, specifically within what are considered the developmental or the developmental years of six and ten years old. Um, it didn't really go, the, the sources that we found didn't really go into explanation on the other 10%, rather prioritizing the 90% of cases in regards to, obviously, like, childhood adverse experiences Looks like and I child may be abuse. whisked away in a bit here. Have a good stream road, and I wish everyone good support. Eat. Have a good one, Tree! Uh, Celine, if you're still here, or if I have any mods that are available, could we get a shout-out for Tree, please, and thank Three you? 3 to 28 for me. Trauma. Unless you count surgery at birth. Let's see. I wouldn't be surprised if we had trauma earlier than 6, considering Bye, tree. Have a 6 good one. was when just another person in the system showed themselves. Um, let's see, is there an example for how that might happen or how one might learn about uh, being dissociative? So, when it comes to learning about potentially being dissociative, especially if you don't know um, if you're formed from trauma or not, that obviously I can't really explain because most studies don't focus on the non-traumatic dissociative experience. Most of them talk on the traumatic dissociative experience. There are some parts of the community that have tried to create terms to be inclusive, such as the Lunastis uh, Collective that had created terms such as um, endogenic, uh, quagenic, and things like that in regards to how different systems are made. However, um, a lot of the various sub-communities in, in regards to dissociative disorders in headmates and thought forums has seemed to start using those terms and supremacist means. Prime example, with a lot of ableism that we see, with some people claiming that being endogenic is to be, it is to have, by default, a better control and communication with your system compared to traumagenic systems that are, that often hide from each other due to trauma and stealth culture in order to keep who, uh, the host or whoever is funny most often safe from the reality that they're that they that they have pretty bad trauma hope i'm making sense with that Just bobbing along with the music. Also, hopefully the delay is not too bad. Also, if you guys need me to move just because like the sparkly sounds are too much, let me know. And figure out who I am instead of feeling lost. Yeah, Pyro. No, I feel you with that. That. For... Taking that first step to try and figure it out yourself, especially if you end up realizing that you are dissociative in like the like in the clinical sense, or even not in the clinical sense, it can be a game changer. Um, but in the words of Howl from House Moving Castle, when war when one door closes, another opens. You're allowed to feel concerned, intimidated by what might happen and what will happen going forward but the more that you hold on to those concerns you're stopping yourself from experiencing what new knowledge you could learn not only for you not only for others but for especially yourself so when you feel up for it when you feel that you can safely do so feel free to take those first steps However, you need to. And 
time we have another ad going on. For everyone that is subbed, and for folks that have been a gift sub, especially to Bunny, massive we thank you. We theorize that plurality may be a different neurotype. Cause like, it might explain why some people can just not develop the disorder under trauma, but others do. And it would explain why people seemingly without major trauma can also form multiple parts of themselves and feel divided. Oh yeah, no, Vitoris, we definitely feel that too. Early in me road figuring out that I was part of the system, I didn't really think that. I had a lot more ableist views um, than I do now. And even then, there's still some prejudices that I am still trying to unlearn. Uh, but yeah, multiplicity and plurality, however you want to phrase it, definitely seems like its own neurotype which can get very interesting when I believe I would have to find it again, but I could have sworn either there was a study or there was a, a hypothesis that because um, neurodivergent people in general are more likely to face certain types of abuse, at the same time, neurodivergent people are simultaneously more likely to become dissociated than neurotypicals. again if this area of the world is getting too much or you want me to move around if the sound is getting too much feel free to let me know and i can move along stretchies thank you for the stretchies ah. oh thank you for the water need to look around for my drink Here we go. Can you tell I'm a thirsty boy? Be as a reminder, um, not only will this be made as a VOD for the VOD channel. This will also be recorded in a special Shoulder way slit. that will allow me to edit it for a video for the second channel. Shoulder salute. Wait, what? Unfortunately, with this model, I can't, um, I cannot undress. <laughs> You're gonna have to be content with that whenever I do 3D model stuff uh, with gaming or with my life 2D model. That was to the Thirsty Boy comment. Oh, that was for the Thirsty Boy comment. Valid. Valid. <laughs> hey, if anyone wants to subscribe to our YouTube channels, uh, if we have any mods available, if you could do explanation point card with two R's, if you hop onto our card, not only will you have uh, info in regards to multiple members of our system that front on stream or are planning to front on stream, you'll also have access to several of our socials, including our two YouTube channels, one of them for VODs, the other for um, our second YouTube channel, which currently only has videos for our con lane that we use in our VTuber lore, but we'll have much more on the way.
Here we go. Alright, since I didn't have any... Um, since I didn't see any mods in chat, I just did that super quick. Vibing to the music. Yee! Yeah, the music is nice. I like how the model just floats idle LMAO. Well, yeah, it's because I'm in VR chat. So when I go outside of VR chat proper, um, when I go into like certain things regarding Steam VR, it makes me float and like uh, cross my legs. But yeah. If anyone has any questions That's regarding so anyone else that is like fronted from our system, such as Ren, Coggy, Swill, and we're hoping to have Imogen and potentially Domino front as well at some points in the future, feel free to ask away. Because quite a few of them are like peeking uh, behind at the moment. So, again, you might hear the voice change, but we don't have any avatars to represent anyone in VR chat, and plus that would take a lot of gigabit, uh, gigabytes, so you're just going to have to deal with the one face right now. God, that's the dream, but also so expensive LMAO. Mood. Fucking mood. Like, and unfortunately, while we would love to get more models from the person that we commissioned for mine, unfortunately, she is on an indefinite hiatus in regards to making content because her computer died. I'm trying to go to the second channel, but it brings me to the VOD. Huh. It may be that accidentally the the two things have the same link. If you're on YouTube, um, and Bunny or anyone that is hearing this, if you could type this for the second channel, type in Road to Dusk, all of those one word, but not one word, separate words, hyphen, terrible system, terrible being spelled T E R A R B A L. Which, for those that don't know, that is a word in our con lane meaning star like. Because we love stars and astro astrology shit <laughs> and astronomy, so that's why we kind of picked that as a name for ourselves. Hold on, let me... that was I like stars and the moon that's part of why I named my art booth at events sweet moon dreams because everyone deserves sweet dreams and bad things pass like the phases of the moon that's adorable that's awesome Yeah, for anyone that wants to find the alternate channel, since apparently the link needs to be fixed on Road our part, to dusk, terror ball system. feel free to uh, copy-paste that in YouTube. That should be the name that pops up for our alternate YouTube channel, which there's currently um, one video up that's currently live regarding um, our con lane, with a Already, new one coming up in a few out. days. I wish you all a good one, and happy support. Yee, thank you, Speed. You have a good one. Sleep well. Ooh. 
Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, thought I was popping my back. Let me also see what time it is. Oh, it is 11.15. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you for the lurk. Um, if anyone has any more questions, whether related to like DID, uh, my sis uh, our system, or just anything in general, maybe related to content, things like that, feel free to ask. Or if you feel that we're good to go for a raid, uh, feel free to say so. We can raid out. If you have someone in mind, feel free to use the guide the raid command. Well, not command, but um, point redeem. You know what? I have a perfect little spot. Is it normal to feel tired after trying to figure some things out about did and self? Or selves? I would say yes, because mm, a lot of people tend to uh, tend to misrepresent or tend to underlook how much mental work goes into opening up doors to yourself not just when it comes to dissociative stuff but just mental health in general learning about yourself and opening up doors to yourself regarding your own experiences and your trauma is going to be taxing so knowing your limits and knowing when it is time to stop when you are feeling overloaded when you are feeling tired is important to know so that you're not overworking you yourself give about did slash ost. One of the biggest warnings that you give about dead and OSTD. Oh, okay. Um, I would say one of the biggest warnings regarding diso regarding dissociative disorders is it is more common, even though we have modern terms by the community that are more inclusive and we have situations and people and communities that are inclusive, do not be surprised if you have to advocate for yourself against a psychiatrist or therapist. Many therapists are not required to learn new knowledge. Many are able to keep their certifications even if they learned and even if they learned information from the DSM-3, which is several decades back, like, like 70 or more. And unfortunately, that does mean that there are going to be a lot of people misinformed. Whether My it is one of yeah. the people to bring up did in a session and ask if I think I have did or that it is possible. That's I told pretty him neat. I didn't know how to answer. Yeah, and no, that is completely understandable. Like suddenly being asked, have you thought about like this thing? Especially depending on how it's worded can be very it can feel like a lot at once. Especially because of the misconceptions of DID, especially per uh, perpetrated by say M Night Shyamalan's Invincible series with Split and Glass. One thing I will also warn um, in relation to DID and OSCD, Jekyll and Hyde and Smeagol and Golem were never written to be dissociative. They were not written from a dissociative lens. They were not, re they were not written to relate to dissociation. They were written to relate to their individual narratives. Smeagol and Golem in regards to madness and maddening power and Jekyll and Hyde in regards to fears of the unknown, fears of science, and fears of lack of control. While yes, they do have dissociative parallels, do not assume them to be dissociative blanket. 
they people may be able to relate to them regarding particular experiences, especially if they have hostile alters. But by default, the stories and depictions of Jekyll and Hyde and Spiegel and Golem are not dissociative. They are not meant to be dissociative. You can see them as potentially coded, but also recognize that their roots are not meant to be that way. Also, if I get, like, too loud and I'm, like, capping my mic, please let me know. While I get, like, passionate uh, when it comes to, like, wanting to talk about these things, if I'm getting to a point where I cannot be understood, let me know and I will tone it down. Nom. 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 You're good. E. Okay. what time it is now wow it's only been five six minutes why does it feel like it's been longer also look at this cute little area you have little vials this little cubby of a sleeping spot which I can't sit down because there's no seats Damn. <laughs> we, for actually, for those that um, are on the card website, there is information for me, um, Ren, uh, Imogen, Kagi, and Swill. Um, if there's any more that you would like to know about any of us or anyone else that was on there that I didn't uh, that I didn't name, feel free to ask. What's the biggest challenge with did? Biggest challenge with uh, did or any dissociative disorder. I, for us, I would say because we are, we have OSTD, specifically 1B. So while we have mostly fully fledged uh, identities, we don't have complete um, amnesic breaks like DID even though in the ICD we've mentioned how those are now lumped together to be a DID in and of itself, but particularly in regards to vocabulary related to the DSM, um, we still deal with a bit of imposter syndrome from time to time because our brain goes, wait, the DSM says we need to interact, that our brain needs to be fucked up in this particular way, but our brain is fucked up in this particular way. And it also doesn't help that we do have so we do have a hostile alter that does like to gaslight, bring up certain traumas, especially to force us into a vulnerable force whoever they are going to in a vulnerable headspace that will insinuate imposter syndrome and then some. Um, 
one thing I do, especially once I dealt with the topic of like hostile ultras and, and hostile headmates, is that they are very much a thing. Unfortunately, one thing that M. Night Shyamalan did get right, as scary as it is, is that hostile ultras can be a thing. It's annoying that the like monster within yourself trope is one of the main things that people use to represent uh, dissociation, especially to the point of systemhood, but it does happen. It would be so much better if we had depictions of healthy multiplicity and mutual accountability rather than so much of this monster in yourself kind of bullshit. When you as learned much as about it does happen. Slash Ost, was there any characters that gave you a new perspective about them? Kagi. Um, Kagi uh, in our system has always been... Oh! Thank you so much for the follow! Um, I can't see who it was that followed. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I haven't been able to name anyone that has followed today, but holy, holy moly, thank you so much. Um, Kagi in our system was kind of the one that kind of helped open the door to me, which is also very ironic considering Kagi started off as a uh, Kingdom Hearts OC in like RP forums that slowly formed into his own identity because our original and our body and brain in general have regularly used video games and roleplay as an escape and roleplay has been an easy way for various people in our system to be able to express their own identities, whether it's roleplay on forums or roleplay in D&D. &D. Um, when I had really opened the door and really started facing reality that I am part of a system, Kagi was the one there to be the big brother in the situation and kind of console me in the whole situation because it can be very daunt it was very daunting for me to go all this time this explains why I felt so disconnected in so many ways to different circumstances why some relationships didn't feel like mine why some emotions I had didn't feel like mine why some friendships I had didn't feel like mine but Kagi also helped me to not feel angry to anyone about it because trauma like we are predominantly a traumagenic system and with that all of our circumstances as much as even in some of our past circumstances different all different members of our system myself included have hurt people hurt people hurt people and it's important to acknowledge, to not only acknowledge that, but also to acknowledge that just because we are hurt does not mean that we cannot grow from the hurt. When we are just complacent in the hurt that we have been put through, we put other people through the same thing and contribute to a cycle of abuse. And it was with Kagi's intervention, ironically, after Kagi also had an intervention from a grant from a friend group that he had in a DD &D session, that we started to really mend things regarding ourselves, our trauma, really started working with a therapist. And while we do still have some issues to work on, we are a lot better now, individually and collectively, than we were when. I realized that I was part of a system in December of 2020. Iana was actually an OC, or so we thought, with some kind of plurality. Her god broke her into four pieces as a punishment for disobedience. Revisiting that lore after we realized we had did was interesting lol i can only imagine especially considering with us being autistic um our originals uh special interest was kingdom hearts and that bled into quite a few of us myself included the reason why i refer to like our our original in the past tense is that he is no longer with us and she hasn't been for quite some time 
and I don't want to get into that because that's very personal and that gets very sad. Um, that said, Kingdom Hearts, especially in regards to its lore, puts a lot of perspective into how we see the world, especially in regards to dissociation. Hence why we are we are preparing a very large series on our second YouTube channel in regards to looking at Kingdom Hearts and the, and the current saga prior to Kingdom Hearts 4 in its associative lens. Which again, if you want to sneak peek of that, though. feel free to check to out to the 2023 The Idea of Wearing Day video apologies. on Roxas. Gonna hop for the night though. Need to try and get my brain to, to regulate a bit. Apologies. Hey, no need to apologize for putting yourself first, Pyro. I appreciate you clarifying and putting yourself first. If you're not part of the Discord, you're more than open to do so. If you still need some space, do what's best for you. Yeah, let me check real quick uh, who might be available for a potential a raid. Oh, we could go to Stream Mom. Haven't gone to Rinka in a good while. Could also go to Feral. Huh? Who would y'all like to go to tonight for raid? Unless we have someone that wants to guide the raid. Do we want to go to... I th Do we want to see someone play Overwatch? Or do we want to go to someone who is just uh, chatting? Get what sounds better for you guys? Poof. Poof? Mayor? Oh, guide the raid. All right, who are you thinking, Vitoris? I'll guide XD Draconic Dork. Draconic Dork, let's go. All right, I'm gonna need to copy paste that on the uh, computer real quick. That said, actually, let's go through our outro stuff. If you guys oh, want I to guess come, I'm late. Nah. You yeah, all good, Rich. Uh, let's see. You're always more than open to check out the VOD Hi, when it goes live. Um, which, if you want a link to that, feel free to check out the official so. card, which includes links to all of our socials and whatnot. Um, now, that said, since we are doing our outro stuff, if people want to support me financially or our system financially, there's a few ways that you can do that. Not only can you subscribe here, you can also check out the Kofi, where you can get subscriptions there, uh, as well as get uh, commissions when they are open. If you want to support us another way, you can check out our throne where we have some various technology and different knickknacks and candies that we have been eyeing that we can't afford at this time. Um, that said, let's get the raid message out. I am currently, since I'm doing stuff with VR, I can't create the alternate messages for followers and subscribers. Um, typically how I would do that is for followers, you would use the, uh, kind of pinkish tome on both sides of the message. If you are a subscriber, you have the choice of either using the raid tome or the corgi that is called Big Ol' Eyes. Um, but yeah, so let's prepare for that raid to Draconic Dork. Give me a moment, I'm gonna look a little funny while I get things set up.
All right, sorry. Oh, I will wait until the ads are finished up just so that things won't get thrown off too, too much. All right. And I unfortunately... Oh, going this way, I have no way to actually interact with my VR stuff. Well, all right, we're going to make things a little weird. Bear with me on this as we prepare to raid out to Draconic Dork, if I can get this to work. All righty daddy. So... Do you know the wild this is the end of the stream? This is not the end of our time together, as the road to dusk will always be open for another adventure. Thank you all so, so much for coming over today. Please have a wonderful rest of your morning, the Discord afternoon, CYA. <laughs> Yee! Please have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is in your time zone, as we say. Bye bye See y'all soon.